The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this bike on. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 89. That is 11 away from 100. I'm not going back into the maths again. <laughs> why are you doing this countdown? I did it last time, didn't I? You did. I don't know why I'm doing it. I think it's because 100 seems like the big build up and we're getting so close, but this podcast will be going six years like to like, get to 100. It's ridiculous. But I have to keep doing it each time, I think. I don't know. How are you, Daniel Byrne? Hello. I am Dan, and you are Gav. I'm Gav. <laughs> we are we are brothers in isolation, as the rest of the world still. How is isolation, Dan? Are you Jack Torrance yet? I'm not Jack Torrance, but I I have cleaned my oven uh, today. That was my job today. I had the day off, and I thought, oh, I'll clean the oven. And then, of course, you pull the oven out, and then you clean the back back of the oven. I mean, this is my life. Do you know what I mean? Gardening. I did the other week, I was cleaning my gutters in the back garden, which sounds like a euphemism for something else. <laughs> I, I got, I, well, I got out the big ladders and I, um, uh, yeah. I uh, glossed my soffit and fascia from my house. <laughs> I love glossing my fascia. Oh, I glossed my soffit too. Yeah. Did you um, get it nice and shiny? Uh, it's all right, but uh, it's a bit sketchy up the ladder. I thought it, it wedged into the wall, didn't start to wedge into the ground. And it's, it, uh, for some reason, I have these old window cleaners windows, and they're legal nowadays because they use the spray system and the big hoses, yeah? These are like the old school ladders which go up, like, so high up, and I've got a load of them. I don't know why I have them, but I have these massive ladders, but they're too big. So they, they try and rest on the guttering, so you have to have them at a real sh- fucking crazy angle, so it's almost like a, a fucking skit from um, an old black and white comedy, you know, or something. I'm trying to climb up. Well, in case in case our listeners are wondering, <laughs> they haven't just tuned into a DIY how to clean your oven and sort your guttering <laughs> out podcast. This is the podcast this is... Here, where we're here to talk about films, horror movies, and pop culture movies and shit well but we are going mental in lockdown well, so yeah, that's well, why we're talking about what, this shit well that's what i'm talking about i'll tell you what wonderful isolation it hasn't bothered me too much and that made me think i probably need to get out there and do more things in life because everyone else is moaning about it i'm like ah, just just doing projects and just doing things and it's like I'm does not that really, mean that i I'm don't really go out that. much you know i'm not really um too it's not, i'm not moaning too much because i'm very lucky me and alice are both working from home hmm. um i genuinely real talk now and we talked about mental health on and off i probably genuinely have about one or two days a week probably about one day a week where i oh, just fucking sick of it oh, really? and i feel a bit low but yeah I remember how lucky I am mm-hmm. and you know that I can go and visit my dad from the end of the garden to drop him his groceries you know stuff like that and there's people in much worse positions but I you know I'm a human being and I have a day here and there where I feel like this is fucking shit isn't it when is it gonna be is this a joke this is a massive joke being played on me I have it a little it's bit not. I don't have it as much as that a little bit um I guess it, it must be hard for some people. So, so I, I enjoy to you if it is. Of it, oh, but I, look, I, I've binge watched fucking Twin Peaks season three. I've made a the other day. I made a miniature house, didn't I? Like, which I want to um, film with with false perspective. And I, it's just having the time to sit there and get a block of foam and spend three continuous, well, two continuous days of really working at it. I wouldn't couldn't do that if I had normal shit going on. I watched work. every. I watched every single episode of Pornhub. I mean, no, sorry. Um, every I episode. I love the fact they're episodic <laughs> now. <laughs> Have you got returning returning stars coming back? <laughs> what happened to joking, What happened I'm to joking. Deborah the other day? Last time I saw Deborah, she had a cock up her nose. What's going on now? I, don't know. I know Debbie did Dallas, but you know, did she do Paris? Ooh. 
Well, this is what are we talking belated, about? Fucking hell. This is our belated Easter this special. This is our bunny it's episode, isn't it? This is our eggs and bunnies episode. It is, and we're extremely excited to spring into action. It's bunny tastic. That, that doesn't work. Does it? Bunny tastic doesn't no. work. No. Um, it's not very bunny. It's exceptionally ecstatic. Egg erection. Um, episode oh, full got, of gone wrong. Now. Full of goopy brown melty chocolate. Yes. So as this tradition started one, two, three, four, five, six years ago, six Easter's ago, we started off initially with uh, movies relating to eggs. So that was Alien One and that was Critters One. We finished the Critters movies a couple of years ago because there's only four of them. Thank fuck. We we thank fuck I've said. Although there are more Critters movies as discussed in our last episode where I watched them. Uh, well, I watched the movie and the TV show on Shudder. But um, we are going to be covering, on this episode, the final so far movie in the Alien franchise, not including the Alien vs. Predators, the main Alien ones. We are covering Alien Covenant from 2017, mm. directed by Ridley Scott. So Ridley Scott returning to the franchise for that one, which is exci- exciting. He did Prometheus, he, he did. So he, did. he, did. he had already returned to that world because you you made a comment to me the other day about this film. So we can talk about that later on. So I wouldn't say it's his, his first time coming back. Also, it's his second time in the world you think of. Not so much a- alien, but yes. Carry on. I'm extremely sorry that I got that wrong, Gav. The yoke is on me. Definitely. It's all over your face. Yeah. Um, the other movie we're going to be covering is a movie which relates to something that usually happens around about the Easter holidays. And that is that is a special little occasion called St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. And for that, we are going to be covering... And we may do this every year moving forward, because there are a few fran- uh, entries in this franchise. We are going to be covering the very first Leprechaun movie from 1993. Now... Yep. Before you say anything, Gav, I must just apologise to any of our Irish listeners. We do have a few, quite a few Irish listeners. You guys know who you are. I apologise right now for any terrible Irish accents that may pop up when we are reviewing the Leprechaun movie. To be fair, Warwick Davis is not <laughs> Irish himself. And he does that terrible accent a lot of the time anyway. Have you got so, my lucky charms? So, yeah. He sounds quite cockney at times, doesn't he? Well, we'll get into that. But we'll get we'll get into that. So that's the movies we're covering. Leprechaun '93, Alien Covenant from 2017, yeah. a couple of years ago. Now. Quite quite uh, different how, movies, uh, aren't they? Very imagine imagine if you got uh, Warren, Warwick Davis as the Leprechaun with an, uh, a mother just hanging out. You know, so it's kind of like one highbrow sci-fi <laughs> sort of. Uh, you know, yeah, very going into arty. deep, deep, deep ideological uh, ideology of the universe Fassbender. and how we started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing the flute, and then Robert Davis, Robert Davis, doing yeah. a pogo stick on your chest while he sings a little rhyme. What the fuck? We get to that. <laughs> we get to that. I've got to clean your shoes. There like, is he actually oh. killing her, her with a pogo stick? He is. But we get to this. We get to this. Um, so but, stay tuned, uh, listeners. What, stay tuned. What have you been up to? What have you been watching? What the fuck is going on in the world of Gav? I watched um, Extraction, which has just dropped on Netflix. It's not horror, it is action, but it's quite gory. It's uh, the... Extraction. Extraction has just come out. It's just um, about a man who's trying to take loads of eggs to one place to another. It's quite violent. Uh, Eggs get spilt. (laughs) Too many eggs in one basket. (laughs) Um, um, It came on Netflix... um, um, as one of their little flicks that they're you know producing it's got old Chris Hemsworth old uh, you know like, mus- muscle like pants sure. from the Avenger movies and um, it came it's by, by I think the effects team or something to do with the production team of the Avengers Endgame or something anyway so um, the action sequences are very very good you've got a lot of one shot one shots just going for a long time with camera moving and out while the action sequences stay you know what I've complained about before with action sequences so I did the descent of recent too much cutting too much, too much cutting this is exactly yeah. what I wanted this is you know when the raid came out and the camera just stayed, yeah. stood there I watched the raid again the other day um, but funnily enough I, I was just chilling out in isolation I whacked it on and I thought fuck me 
action scenes don't really get much better than this than the rank two really do they they're uh, insane check out extraction because that is definitely without a doubt on par <laughs> Um, it's nice wow. seeing Chris Hemsworth doing that because it's nice to see him killing massive amounts of people because um, <laughs> I don't say this lightly, but I mean, in like he's just been running around with a bloody fake cape on and a hammer, like I'm God of Thunder, and and you know, stuff like that. It's nice to see him do a gritty piece. Do you know what I mean? And not get stereotyped into like a, a, a family favorite or something. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, he's a good actor. It, so this movie is basically um, if John Wick was a computer game, which is kind of like John Wick Two anyway, but this is a bit more extreme. Um, it's definitely if you know if you play your um, if John Wick was a character in um, Call of Duty, you know those games. Okay. Yeah. It's yep, that. Yep. It's basically that. Absolutely, no doubt. Even the settings, are just like these places far, far fetched eastern places you don't know of. And it looks like just one of those games. Uh, excellent. Uh, I'm going to watch it again at some point. Um, well, my dad's recommended that to me. Again. Um, so that's you and my dad. So I will be watching that. Don't you worry about it. Yeah, it's a nice action thing. It's it's mindless. There's literally no story uh, really to it. Um, and that's you don't need one. And the other film that I watched, or do you want to go first? And I'll come back. You go first. You go. You go. Yeah, well, I watched a couple of movies. One I'll talk about, and then we'll come back to you, is I watched another movie. And it's I like swear tennis, we did this on per. It is. Tonsil tennis. But that sounds just gay. With me wow. and you. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you watched a Extraction. I watched the movie, and we haven't done this on purpose, listeners, but I watched a movie called Extremely Wicked. Uh, what's it called? Extremely Wicked, Ex- Shockingly, Shockingly Evil and Vile. Extremely Wicked. Yeah, this is a movie. And I watched Bundy. Extraction. This is brilliant. <laughs> And this is a movie about Ted Bundy, is it, played is it, by Zac Efron. Is it now on the old UK Netflix? Was that a Netflix movie? It's not. No, oh. it's not yet. Uh, so I didn't why, watch it on why, the UK why Netflix. Why do they not... If they their studio goes and makes a movie, just release it worldwide Netflix. Why? It's the, no. they, they, own the, they own the film. Why, <laughs> why do it's they... It's strange. St- it's really fucking weird. But anyway, sorry, carry on. Is it good? Very, very enjoyable. Obviously, slight elements of it are drama- more drama- uh, dram- dramatic uh, what's the- uh, dramatised is that the word no I dramatic <laughs> some of it some of it's not it's the stuff that didn't happen but most of it's based oh, okay, on what gotcha. happened Zac Efron is really good as a guy that you totally believe couldn't have done any of these murders he's a lovely guy does he have a wank in the bush um, terrible man does he have a wank and in the bush got- he doesn't have a wank in the bush but like, he does- um, have you seen the other Ted Bundy movie um, Tom Savini did the effects for us. Quite, quite vile, actually. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a shame. This one's got John Malkovich in it as a judge, and also, jarringly, it's got Haney Joel Osment in it from The Sixth Sense, who's now a fat man with a beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I highly, highly recommend it. It kept me, even though I know the story of Ted Bundy, it kept me really on the edge of my seat. All the way through, and Zach Efron's probably the best thing I've seen him in. Really trying to get away from all of his sort of, you know, High School Musical and all his like bromance, you know, movies that he does. Mm. Brilliant, brilliant. Check it out. Okay. What's cool. the next one you've seen? I can't. I don't think I could put an egg into the title. Um, I'll try. The Eggleman. No, it don't work. The Gentleman. Uh, Guy Ritchie's new film. Yeah, I. Saw a trailer for this. Seen a few trailers for it. It looks kind of like a bit of a lock stock type movie. Guy yeah. Ritchie. Did you like lock stock? I fucking love lock stock. Did you like snatch? Not as much, but it's still a good film. I would say this is the third in a trilogy. Okay. I would say it's as good as lock stock. Um, wow. And snatch. Um, I've watched it twice this week <clears throat> um, because it was just yeah, really really good. Matthew McConaughey is a uh, the biggest sort of weed dealer in England, um, and like like high up like dealers, yeah, obviously like own like all of the crops in England sort of thing, and it's, yeah. it's about that sort of thing, and then people trying to take territory. But then there's a side story comes in where someone's just like, oh, can you do some favors for me? So Colin, um, there's a, there's a few little things coming. In. It's one of those what you expect with Guy Ritchie movie, different stories. Kind of he is basically kind of our British. 
Tarantino. Tarantino. Yeah, and I was going to say that. There's a scene in this movie which also is like, wow, this is like Jules and... What's it called in Pulp Fiction? Jules and... What's the other oh, name? Jules and Vincent. Jules and Vincent. It's like them two when they go to the house and he tries the yeah. cheeseburger. You've basically got that scene where it's... <clears throat> I don't know the guy that well. He's the main guy in it. Charlie... Hum, I, I don't know. Uh, but... The guy, he's from Breaking Bad, isn't he? No. No, no, it's a different guy. It's an English guy. Um, um, so you got him and, it, and, and two like bodyguard type of guy, and they just knock on the door and they go around to a skaghead's place because they've gone to get a girl and bring her back because her dad owns loads of money or whatever, and they're like, go get her. Oh, okay, cool. And it's so much. I was sitting there going, this is like bloody Pulp Fiction. But anyway, it's an incredibly good movie. Um, some brilliant scenes in it and I watched it twice because it's one of those films because like it's a very much the same age stories going on and things playing reverse and forwards and all you can watch it again quite happily and I would you know I would sit and watch it a third time this week if if it you put it on it wouldn't bother me at all I really really enjoyed it return to form for Guy Ritchie then absolutely it's a, a, a must see uh, if you like the, the crime caper British thing and it's not too or fucking yeah like Lockstock was because obviously that was his first film it's not as rough as that and sort of raw it's a bit more polished and matured I would say he's got he's got the money now hasn't he absolutely the money. McConaughey's great in it like uh, Colin Farrell's amazing as the coach it looks like a really good cast from what Colin I remember Farrell, seeing so the he's, he's the coach and he just has all these guys in the boxing ring and work for him but they all going around for, like they make grind videos while they beat people up with cameras <laughs> and they're rapping while they're beating people up and stuff and they're kind of like this British Wu-Tang clan or something and, <laughs> and he's in charge of them and they go and do something he's like what are you doing guys what are you doing it's, it's decent and then he has to sort it out and go oh I have to go do it my boys my boys didn't mean to do it I'm sorry I'm in your debt etc it's a really good movie yes oh, I'll check that out definitely then well talking of crime capers the mm. other movie that I watched only today actually which I wanted to talk about was Knives Out yeah I enjoy it I enjoyed I, it. I really enjoy enjoyed. I love I love the uh, voice oh, sorry I'll interrupt again I always love the uh, murder mysteries when you have the lots of a cast ensemble cast of good characters and stuff and this is back to form of that old school storytelling isn't it huge cast really fantastic cast you know Jamie Lee Curtis is always a pleasure to see on, on screen Daniel Craig is incredible in it because I feel like he's become a bit of a he's a bit bored with acting recently it feels like he's just kind of phoning it in but he was fantastic in this and everybody in it was really good um, and Chris Evans Captain America was so good in it actually he, he, um, he, he underacted a lot I thought Chris Evans in it. he really underplayed his character in a good yeah. way I thought he yeah, played definitely. it really really low key and it's very not very often because, as as you and I and our listeners know, having watched the fucking million films, we can guess what's going to happen in most movies. But I really didn't see the twists and turns in this, and it was hilarious. It reminded me of, in a good way, it reminded me of Clue and Death Trap, and it made me want to go and watch some of those, um, you know, murder mystery Agatha Christie because that's what it is. That's what it is really. Can... It's just a very clever. Uh, Agatha Christie's well, tale. The, the the two the two main ones you want to do is um, Murder on the Orange Express of the old school seventies one. This is Murder on the Orange Express. I love that one. With, you got in it Sean Connery and um, Norman Bates, old um, Anthony you Perkins. Need. You know, and then the other one next to that is Death on the Nile. Um, apart from that, there is there is there is some more, but you don't get as big a cast as those two films. Uh, and Murder being the best and obviously that was remade recently um, and that is actually in like the sequel to, of that one's coming out soon of yeah. the next which death is going to be Nile, death on the, which is Death on the Nile yeah yeah. Um, and but yeah Ryan, Knives Out I highly recommend that well Ryan Johnson directed Knives Out and he's already penned to do another one with Daniel Craig playing the same character again as a detective oh that's so good I was glad it's already, I was thinking... it's, no, it's already been there. He's he, the, the director himself he loves murder mysteries and he's always been putting little murdery mystery type things in his films because he wrote it as well didn't he yeah yeah because yeah, he did he did, Han, did he did a Han Solo film uh, no he did um, Star Wars The um, the Last Jedi the, what, no wasn't it The Force or the, no the um... he did the middle one Last Jedi oh ok cool um, but yeah it's funny that he's sort of gone on to do like these but he really likes it and I think it did ok so he's doing the next one 
Uh, and I was hoping, you know, watching Daniel Craig's character, he, he is basically like a weird sort of cross between um, Foghorn Leghorn, you know, oh, I say, I say, boy, yeah. mixed with like Hercule Poirot. And I was thinking, what a unique character. I want to see him going around, get a well, big you... cast in for every movie. With different well, he's, he's going to be coming off James Bond. I reckon that, you know, like, to be honest, I reckon that's going to be his next character for. I reckon they'll probably do at least I'd three love films. It. I reckon they'll do three films. Yeah. I'd love it. Yeah. Well, that was it. That was it from me. So that's what I've watched. That's what you've watched. Mm-hmm. Um, have you got any news? I've got a little bit of news before we head into I've our first watching, I've been binge watching Hell's Kitchen with Gordon Ramsay. Oh, God. <laughs> Fucking loving it. He is. I don't like him very much. I, I've never watched anything of his, and I've really enjoyed it. Alice, <clears throat> I say this quietly because she's in the other room. She yeah. kind of fancies him a bit. Oh, does she? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was gentle in my ears then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. Uh, but I think she likes that sort of strong, authoritative man. So maybe I should shout at her a bit more whilst wielding a kitchen knife. Just say to her, yeah, your fucking scrambled eggs are raw. Raw. You burned the fucking bacon. Look at this shit. Feel that. Just felt. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, anyway, yes. Should we get on with what we're doing? Talk about. Yeah, I just got one little bit of news and then we can crack on. I am very excited to be appearing on um, a, a, another podcast as a little guest. A little guesty guest. And this is our Jamie Creedy's podcast, oh, Bite sweet. Size Cinema. Nice. Yeah, um, it's something we've been chatting about on and off for a couple of months. And I will be appearing on an upcoming episode. Lo and behold, guess what I'll, I'll be discussing? I'll be discussing the Masters of the Universe I was about movie. To say, hey, man. Dolph Lundgren. Of of yeah. So um, that'll be rec- we'll be recording that very soon. So I will be sure, as RJ will, to share that. And if you haven't checked out RJ's show, I would definitely uh, recommend it. It's called Bite Size Cinema. It's on the Legion Network, and basically he reviews um, any movie, whether it's pop. Um, I was going to say pop fiction, pop culture, anything in pop culture, whether it's uh, you know sci-fi, fantasy, horror. He he's got a really broad range, a really broad taste, and. Each episode is roughly sort of 20 to 30 minutes. That's why it's called Bite Size Cinema. I'd highly recommend it, guys. It's a great show, and it really is, you know, you pick it up, 20 minutes, you're done. It's not like our show, which is four or five fucking hours. You're probably turning off after an hour. So, yeah, recommend that. And listen out for that when it drops, guys. I'll be talking about He-Man's loincloth. <laughs> Skeletor's boner might come up sometime. <laughs> Last time though, that was good, wasn't it? Old Skeletor uh, getting sucked <laughs> off by He-Man. Suck it, suck it, He-Man. <laughs> do we do a trailer for Alien Covenant? You've all sacrificed so much to be here and be a part of this thing we're doing. This crew is made up of couples. It's the first ever large-scale colonization mission. And everyone back on Earth is really grateful for your hard work, and your courage. We're making history here. This is wheat. What are the odds of finding human vegetation this far from Earth? Who planted it? You hear that? What? Nothing. No birds. No animals. Nothing. What happened here? Where 
Where is it? Alien Covenant 2017. The crew of a colony ship bound for a remote planet discover an enchanted paradise with a threat beyond their imagination and must attempt a harrowing escape. It's kind of the same as all the alien stories. It's like they're going somewhere and something stops them and they go, oh, let's go have a look. And someone says, don't go and look at that. And they go, we will. And it all goes bad. Oh, look, there's an egg. Let's look at it. No, don't look Every at it. I'm going to look at it. Every time. It's Fuck twats me. on these spaceships. Isn't it? That's obviously why... The eggs are obviously why this comes up every Easter. Um, so unless another one comes out, this is our, our final alien movie. Well, we should have looked into this more. Wasn't old... What is he? He is African, South African director. Wasn't he making... Blum, blum... What's his name? Oh, Neil Blomkamp. Wasn't he? He, very he was much making in a production, movie. pre-production of an alien movie. Then Ridley Scott came along and said, "No, no, I've done my Prometheus. And I want to do this Alien Covenant, and it's going to be a bridge to another bit. But then it's going to lead into Alien. Yeah. So can you stop he what you're doing? He put he, he basically threw said his it's, toys it's out my of property. Pram, didn't he? Yeah, he took his property back and said no. And he was and already Blomkamp in pre-production. Actually, had Michael. Well, he had Michael Bean cast in it again. Um, and, and he, I think he, I don't think he had Sigourney in it. What but he was, did have, what was he did... this in relation in the whole arc of the stories then? Was it coming after Alien 4? I guess it would have been, yeah. But were they going to do like they did with some of the movies and just ignore like to, uh, uh, the 3 and 4 and just go from like 1 to... All I know is that I saw some of the artwork, because not a lot's come out about it, apart from his tweets and he's a bit pissed off. Neil I'm not Bonkamp, fucking but... surprised. But um, he had some artwork where they had Michael Bean, um, uh, you know, with scars all down his face from what happened in the previous Alien movies, and uh, you know, and, and I just thought this, this is going to be good. And obviously, that guy he did um, he, District Nine, which, he would be good. which is he'd be brilliant. perfect at making an Alien film. He really, really would. He genuinely would. Absolutely and, would. He would make a good movie. He'd have made a better movie than Alien Covenant. Now I like Ridley Scott as a director, but. I do think he is a little bit of a cunt. I don't say that very often. I was going to say ball show. bag, but you went there. But I do think he does seem like he's a bit, a bit obnoxious sometimes. Do you think um, he's basically well? Do you think he has been doing this for a long time? Do you think he's kind of just full of that? I don't really give a shit anymore. Um, I've done so much. I think he I've is, got yeah. a reputation where I can say yes or no, and people will jump if I tell them to, and they will sort of jump how high. A friend of mine was an extra on Gladiator, and oh, which was filmed old in uh, my town. It was indeed, and apparently, like, he witnessed him like firsthand shouting at people, like, "Where the fuck's my cigar?" You know, and stuff like that. Oh, so really? He's a bit of a bit of a dick, but you know, he's a he's a, he's a Hollywood director, and not I'm saying that that's good, but you no, can't. But he's an old that, school, though, isn't he? He, he, he is. He, he has is. done it for many to- many years, so he kind of, you know. But anyway, regardless. Really, at the end of the day, it comes to what's the best product that the audience is going to watch. Really. Yeah. And that should be the thing. But I guess it's hard to see that if you're like, no, that's my baby and I started it. Well, I never would have saw uh, this movie come in. So this is a sort of follow up to Prometheus, which was a prequel to Alien. So and this I is another prequel. Love Prometheus. Yeah, and we covered it last year in yeah. our Easter episode, and it's a great movie. Oh, I adore that. Film. Um, there's something about the whole gods created man, oh, and I really like that for a beginning of before Alien, and it sort of shows a bit of how Alien comes around, and I love the cast in it as well. <clears throat> we loved. Do you remember how much we loved Fake Tom Hardy in that movie as well? Yeah, yeah, and I felt bad to keep saying that because I like that guy as well. But yes, we do. <laughs> Well, this is a follow-up to that. We have Michael Fassbender returning. Um, Which is nice as to another have robot. that. It gives it a bit of pedigree for the film. He's a good actor, Fassbender, isn't he? If you put him in a movie... He is. I, lo- I love him in um, Tarantino War film. Inglorious Bastards. He was so good in that scene when he drops English accent. 
uh, German. I watched 12 Years a Slave the other day, uh, which I'd seen a long time ago, and it's a very hard film to watch. But he's in that, and he's so good in it, although he's a horrible bastard in it, but he's so good in it as well. He's You forget, actually, because I've seen him nothing really more than the X-Men movies over and over again. He, he is actually a great actor mm. does when he turns up and does does his job and he's great in this you know he does what he does in before this before we quickly get to the cast um it's just to say uh, another reappearance of a someone in this in the crew section is a fairly well-known director walter hill produced this and he produced the yes. original alien and you obviously you know walter hill from many movies i think he directed 48 hours and another 48 hours um Warriors, Warriors. Come out and play. And like uh, he's been around the block as well, and it's funny like, to see his name because you don't see his name that so much anymore. And if you do, it's not on big films, that's for sure. So much. So it's nice to see that actually. I quite appreciated like that as a crew coming back, as a creative yeah, team cool. in the crew. <clears throat> You got Guy Guy Pierce is back as well briefly in this, isn't which he? is interesting uh, the, because uh, I the, watched Prometheus about two weeks or a week before watching this, kind of by accident, and obviously it's a, it's before this, and you got obviously Guy Pierce's as a uh, uh, Wayne Industries, is it? No, is it? no, yeah, the Wayne Industries, and he's the old guy in it, and and you remember watching that film? I think we talked about it. I was just like, well, what the fuck's he? Uh... <clears throat> Excuse me, what the fuck's he like? Uh... Uh, old? Why don't you just cast an older person? Yeah, we and did that's say really... that. Just and cast a really old bastard. Maybe it was because of this, because then you can just take the makeup off and go back to where it was before and show that bit. But it's just for like one scene, because he's not in it again. Two other crew cast members I want to very quickly touch on before we get into the, the meat of the film. Um, Danny McBride, generally seen doing funny things, notably in a horror world co-wrote the last Halloween film randomly he plays Tennessee in this he's quite good in this he's though, okay you know? in it he's alright he's, he's alright uh, and the other character that's in this it's that nice to see train... again someone that you know <clears throat> The other, the other um, actor that that was in a lot of the trailers, and I, I think they might have cut some scenes with him. To be honest with you, James Franco is in this for like a split second as a boyfriend, um, as the, the as the dead boyfriend. Yeah, I saw so, that, but it's not in the credits. Uh, I do think there were more scenes. Yeah. No, it's weird, isn't it? It's Very weird strange. that he, he's blinking, you miss it, and he's not really in it. But um, that... it's a couple of funny guys in this. Well, that beginning bit, you, it's just like a scene with Guy Rich talking to David, but it's not David because it's an earlier model which we get to find out. It's basically your Arnold Schwarzenegger and Terminator. Um, and it's an earlier model. Yeah. And it's, it's what's he called? Um, so we've got David, and the other one is called... Oh, David's it Prometheus. It's, uh, it's, it's Fassbender's robot in... Is it Michael, isn't it? It's Michael, because he looks at the the painting and he calls himself Michael, is that right? I don't think it's Michael. It's, not, it's in my notes, but it's later on. It, uh, it's Walter. Hang on, it's let Walter. me find it. It's Walter. It is Walter. So you've got Guy Rich talking to Walter, and... It says about who created you, and he's chatting to him and stuff. We're having another one of these kind of conversations we had with the fake uh, Tom Hardy and his character early on when they're playing pool when he infects him, and he says about oh who created you, blah blah blah. We have this this Walter character, the robot of Fastbender, saying to him, "But who created you?" And um, once you know, and it's quite nice. We're going back to this whole like the creation of humans and stuff. I'm kind of. In some ways, Ridley Scott is still touching on this subject, and I reckon it's something to do with him maturing, and something you probably get to in life, and most people probably do, well, not everybody, uh, a lot of people who maybe are more thinkers or deep thinkers possibly think about life a lot more, and origins of where it came from and stuff. Um, and what, I think what, what does it all mean? As you get older, naturally, I think you do a bit more, because you, for whatever reasons. Um and that's why I think he might be exploring it, and I don't mind going back to that. But then this film doesn't it it misses it. As soon as we leave that scene, we kind of in that world a little bit, but not in the script wise, intelligence wise of that. We're not really getting into the crux crux of like a human mankind where it came from. We get into just kind of a oh, all right, another alien movie. It's kind of a like, oh, let's just throw it on. Let's just make this because we're using it as a bridge to get to the next movie or something. But is he still making well, the next I movie? I agree. 
Well, it's not really been talked about very much. Uh, I agree it's with what flopped. you've been saying. That's that. probably why. Yeah, uh, really. uh, and, and I'll attach this to something we talked about earlier with him taking the property back as his own. Now, he's 82 years old now. Wow, Ridley I didn't realise that. So, he, he, how old was he? So, so, he was like 77, 76 when he directed this. Okay. Yeah, probably, yeah. Because it, it came out in 2017, so he'd have been making it 15, 16. Um, so... Um, I think he's pushing it now, his, his age, you know, he's getting on, you know, a lot of people are lucky if they get into their 80s, even their 90s. Um, so he's 82, and I think, firstly, he's exploring what it means to be alive, what it means to be a man, a human, blah, blah, blah. And we're getting that with Prometheus and this, which is great. But I do think he's gluing that whole theory and story and all that stuff onto the Alien franchise, just because it's his baby and he wants that back to make that money and i don't know if it i, I, I don't, don't know i'm, I'm not gonna say it's, it belongs. it's not gonna be money he's not gonna need money from he's not gonna need money it's gonna be that's my thing it's gonna be stubbornness i'd say <clears throat> yeah because the alien movies feel very different from from prometheus and alien covenant because they're they're exploring more the beginnings of man and creation and god whereas the other alien movies are just either horror action action horror sci-fi action horror you know they don't really they do what they say on the tin and they're fucking great movies whereas these two are a bit more out there and i do love that i do love that it's just it feels weird that they've the aliens in it the xenomorph is in it do you know what i mean does that make sense yeah 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 it's just i also don't think it possibly it's so there we go um stubbornness with him uh wanting to do this and taking right i'm taking that movie away from him bloom camp I um I think he, he must have just come up with this, this one day like woke up and goes, I've got an idea <clears throat> and then I'll oh, screw Bloom Camp down, but I've got an idea for another film. It's just I don't know why he had to do that and why I guess it would have been confusing for people as what they're thinking, like, Oh well, what's that movie and what's this movie and what what? It doesn't make sense. Um but because otherwise it happened with the Terminator movies that. as well. But then again if, What but, happened with the Terminator movies, they 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 made they rushed uh, to make Terminator Genesis, which was the one before the last one, um, just because they were coming up to the end of it was anyone could have the property after it reached I don't know how many years it was. So they quickly banged out another movie, so it stayed with the studio. Um, and then they've made the new one again, which came out last year. And you can kind of tell that they just rushed through just to keep hold of the property. It's a bit of a shame, really. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> no, I agree. It's strange how these things work. Yeah, totally. But, um, getting into the movie it's a difficult movie to talk about um because there are two things going on here one of them is like i've said what is god what is man where do we come from what are we about why are we here but the real meat of this really is 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 basically a remake of of alien almost you know they they land on a planet um and they go off and explore and they come across eggs which we talked about but they also did that in prometheus <laughs> Exactly. So this is a remake of a remake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a lot, like a lot of people said about the Star Wars movies, are all remakes of the original Star Wars movies, which I guess they are in some ways, really. <clears throat> in some but, degree, yeah. So the Covenant is the ship. It's a, um, a like, colonization like, vessel. Like Prometheus was the ship in there, because I keep forgetting that when you think it's alien, da da da, you forget. Oh, Prometheus is actually a ship. And so, yeah. this, so this is what is this? Then it's confident is the ship as well. The confident, I, yeah. I, and I, the, I, apparently, the third, do you think the third one is going to be called um, Alien Red Dwarf? Could be. Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Or Alien <laughs> Alien Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Any of that? No, <clears throat> um, I think I think we need Crichton walking around with Michael, <laughs> Michael Fassbender's Crichton. I'd fucking love to see that. Yeah. Um, so the Covenant is a colonization vessel. It's got thousands of people, 2000. lots of scientists on it. It's got 2,000 uh, sleeping colonists. And they're all on there ready to land on whichever planet is they're heading to. They, they basically all in this massive one room and they all look like Han Solo and carbon freezing, hanging like meat all down the lines. Yeah, they're thousands. like uh, yeah. hundreds. A, a, fridge, a fridge full of blood yeah. bags yeah, in a yeah, morgue or yeah. something. But but we have, um, we start with a collision, don't we? Yeah, there's a power surge, and some of the crew were woken up. Unfortunately, a lot of them just get set on fire while they're asleep, which isn't very nice. Yeah, it's a little full on. 
So a few of them die. Um, 50, around 50 people die, apparently, they say. Um, there's only 15 crew left, apart from the sleepers. There's still a load of sleepers. But only 15 of the actual crew are left because the, the captain died. Uh, How did now the, the captain, captain die? Who, uh, he died in a sleep on fire. Oh, he was in stasis as well, was he? Oh, of course he was. Everybody was. Sorry. Yes. He I'm a bit was. Because it's David. I mean, James Walter. Franco. Oh, yes, of course. And I mean, it's, yeah. Walter's the one going around keeping the tabs on all of the... Uh, checking the gauges, checking things, making sure everything's all right, the temperatures. He's just walking around. And because he's a robot, skull, he'll just keep sure going. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't get old. And they, um, they, they, they've got a mission then. They're going to another planet to set up shop basically for them and call it a home that's the idea yes to colonize this planet indeed but um obviously this power surge has caused a problem they're all awake a lot earlier than they need to be um they're nowhere near they're, they're hundreds of years away from the planet um and, they, they need to and they're going gonna to have to go so, back into stasis and they don't want to why don't they want to is it it fucks you up i guess i guess it fucks you up a little bit but then they pick up a little bit of a weird signal, a bit of a radio wave, and they get a bit of John Denver coming through the radio, don't they? Mm. Um, they get a bit of uh, the old uh, Take Me Home, Country Road. Yeah, I don't know. You could just about make it out. Um, so that comes through the radio, and they're like, well, hang on a minute, what the f where's that coming from? So they locate the source, uh, and it's a planet with an atmosphere, and it, the one that they're heading to is seven years away. That's what it is. So they can't be fucked to get back in for seven years. So they're like, look, this one's got an atmosphere. It looks, it's got forest and stuff. Let's let's head to there and see what it's like. But then, and see who's <clears throat> sending the signal. And, out. And, and that's that's your that's your back and forth to this story. The idea, this this problem's happened. Can we solve it? Uh, what we can do, but we've got it's gonna take a long time. We're gonna go to this other planet. Why don't we go here? And of course, you've got someone who is actually a sensible person that says we can't risk all these colonists because you still got some in stasis, haven't you? Just to go and see who sent out a John Denver song. Yeah, because it's just it's crazy. We can't do that. But of course, you know what happens when when it seems the easy way of doing something. We go the easier way. We're humans. Let's do the quick and so, easy route. So they send down a little ship with a few of them in it, and they land in this beautiful planet. I'm waiting for Ewoks to pop out of the trees. To be honest with you, in this That'd planet, be it's Davis beautiful. again, wouldn't it? It would be. It's a wow. Oh, Ewoks. Look at my fluffy um, tail. Go on him. <laughs> Do Ewoks have tails? I don't know. Yeah. I might might, might have, be they... their penises. I'm not sure. I think they've got I think they've got front tails. <laughs> I've um... never heard it called a front <laughs> tail. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that from now on. Look at my front tail. My front tails my front tail's wagging. My front furry tail. <laughs> <laughs> so they land on this planet um and it like i said it's a beautiful forest planet waterfalls um they do comment that they can't hear any wildlife there's no birds no insects to be seen um so there is something strange about that it's, yeah there's, we there's, get, well they can't know. hear anything there's no, the only the only sound is them yeah, there's no sound and, effects and whatsoever. Yeah, 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 which is it's kind of creepy. I, I was quite impressed with how they did that. They must have done a uh, sound stage. Yeah, they uh, they do hand some guns out, mm -hmm. and they say, you know, everybody needs a weapon just in case we don't know what's going on. Um, so they head on into this planet. By the like way, we've got the original silence, score like. going on through this movie. Did you notice the original Alien score? I did notice that. Which is interesting, isn't it? Is it just exactly the same yeah, yeah, score? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's going to be a couple of other different things, but it's, yeah, they've reprised in the score, absolutely. Which is great, because it really gives you a sense of familiarity, doesn't it? Well, that's what they're trying to do, and and with sound, it's good. When, when you have visuals um, in a movie, sometimes that can pull you away from the movie, and you go, oh, I wish I was watching that movie, because it's better. But with this, with sound, it's, it doesn't. It It's nice to have those... It's like when Predators came out, they had a bit of the score from Predator in it, and it's nice to do that to give you a bit of like remembrance of those films. Yes. Love that score. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it feels to me like they've just they're they're 
they're expanding Alien One because in Alien One everything was in the dark. It's, well, it's called that and aliens. In the isn't daylight. It? Well, it's called this and aliens because they drop down in a thing, a group of them, and it's kind of like an aliens where they have their little car and they go yep. down sort of thing. So we kind of get in these bits and both, and this is why this film is such a shame. At the end of the day, this film's not that great. It's kind of just it is what it is. Um, it's a shame because we're starting up to set up this really play, great place and this world is beautiful looking it's so nice and the cinematography is great it, it, however, it looks epic yep however there are some weird flowers aren't there because one of the guys goes off for a little cigarette uh, Why are they not, while he's having his I, cigarette I know they're not um, uh, wearing uh, face masks and stuff but why are they not no, no, I don't know. Why are they not wearing face masks and stuff? Well, they knew there was an atmosphere, but I'd still say, guys, there might be toxic flowers that's and plants. A, that's the Let's... same as fucking Prometheus when fake Tom Hardy goes, oh, I'm just going to take it off. Like, don't take it off. Don't take it off. And he takes it off. And it's like, why have you taken that off? That's it, it just like that's just stupid. I'm just going to take off uh, just take off this off mask and put my nose yeah, it's like... in Crazy. Yeah, and he sniffs, and sniffs, her, sniffs her thing and releases a... Like it, he hits a vegetation, this sort of thing releases like some little cells, these little germs that fly up into the air. Yeah, they? they go in his ear, don't they? Well, he smokes. I really like them showing this visually because he smokes a cigarette and it makes the germs go black, so we can see them flying along and they fly into his ear canal. And I thought that's a really good way of showing that how that's done. Yeah, no, it was really cool. Um, so we're like, fuck, something's just gone in his ear. We don't know what that is yet. But the next scene is they find the big jockey ship. They find the spaceship Alien. from the end of Prometheus. Yep. It's, and from it's, Alien, it's, the big giant one. It's Because Charlie's Theron would be underneath that ship that they find. It's the Prometheus yep. one. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same ship, yes. Yep. Um, they... They find more of these weird little eggs, don't they? Well, you get another. And they find. Crew, and they really, because they've the... split up, haven't they? There's like two different groups looking yeah. around. And you got another one goes and goes and breathes in another another thing, don't they? And they find the the suits, the space suits that the jockeys would have worn, and they say, "Well, they they must have been giants. Look how big they were." Yeah. Um, because we know that these these big creators I think they're called they're quite big aren't they they're like good sort of seven or eight feet tall yeah. um, they find some dog tags yeah and yeah they find dog tags because they find out that they're not the first ones there uh, they find that apparently, it's the captain from Prometheus isn't yeah it? and apparently it's ten years ago so it's been ten years since that we Prometheus had ended um yeah, because we have a we have a character that comes back up which is almost which is exactly the same as Predators isn't it it is indeed yeah. well, with Larry Fishburne yeah. but yeah we get to that we get to that carry on Daniel son carry on um, so um, cutting back to the guy that had the cigarette in the woods and had the little germs going in his ear he is now suddenly very quickly really sick yeah. and they need to get him back to the, to the ship immediately he's really not very well he's collapsing he's sweating he looks like he's about to die any second they do get him onto the ship but then he starts convulsing, and rather than a chest burster, he gets a bit of a back burster, doesn't he? Yeah, it flips, it little bends his back backwards, and his spine pops out, and a little fucking creature comes out of his spine. This was in the alien world of aliens. This was actually quite good, you know. I loved seeing it come out of his back. Yeah, it's a tiny yeah. little mini xenomorph. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't quite look like the xenomorphs that we know. Um, obviously because A it's tiny but B it's, it's slightly different it's almost like they adapt slightly in each in each um, movie uh, well at the but moment yeah. they're trying to get back to the ship aren't they they've actually signalled ahead saying that we've got infected on it we need to get back soon as well that's one party on the ground and the other party are making their way back to the ship at the same time aren't they yeah 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 at different locations yeah it's trying to get back and it's, it's quite chaotic um and they've got the old radio control uh, uh, you know in their ears and they're sort of saying we need to get back need to get back and there's shit going on and it's it's i quite like this i didn't mind it at all because that, that little thing that comes out the back just goes and f runs off into the bushes doesn't it it does indeed and while that's happening um the other guy that had some of the spores go into his mouth 
he has one come out of his throat, a xenomorph come out of his throat. So they're in the bushes outside, and he's got one coming out of his mouth, and then it starts attacking them all. Mm. What? Meanwhile, there's one in the ship going nuts as well, and See, it's all kicking off basically. It really is kicking off because you got no because uh, you have an infected person that goes into the ship, uh, they put it in quarantine, and it, it, it escapes. You have this woman grabs a gun in the ship. Don't give this isn't a sexist comment, but don't give this particular lady, <laughs> this particular person, a gun twice she fucks up she she shoots first of all fucks up the whole thing so the thing can get out goes outside the ship shoots again and blows up the whole ship the whole goddamn ship so the people oh outside God. not only are they fucked because there's an alien in the bushes you had one job but one they're also job fucked because the ship they were heading back to is now excluded it's insane so you got above the the like the cloud line where they can't really get to them you've got old um what's he called Danny McBride. Danny McBride up there. Oh, I'm leading the ship. My wife's down there. She sounded like she was in trouble. I'm going to have to go down there. No, no, we're not going to go down there. I want to go down there. He doesn't sound like that. I'm just putting on some voice. Um, and they can't get down there. And they have to hang out and wait. But they're kind of stranded on this, on this, uh, this, this, the, this inhabited planet, which is uh, the atmosphere where they can breathe and stuff. And you do have these kind of, I quite like some of the scenes when you've got the aliens come along, almost like a pack of lions trying to take them out. Yeah, they reminded me of like the raptors in Jurassic Park. And also a little bit like in Predators, <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stop saying Predators. It, Talking of Danny McBride and his wife, did you notice that this is all just couples on this ship? No. Like everyone's in a relationship. Yeah, like there's this like three or four couples on this ship. It's weird. Everyone's in a relationship. Yeah. Which is fine. We all need someone. Probably do when you're in space. It's fine. Now, just as things look terrible for them, because their ship's blown up, their ground ship, the other ship they can't get back to now, suddenly someone turns up with a flare. He says, Fly me. He said, "Yeah, follow me." Do. And this is this is again the the what I'd say is Lawrence Fishburne in Predators, but yes, and it's a cloaked character saves the day from an attack of the uh, the onslaught of the uh, aliens coming out. And it says, "Follow me." So they all go off following this kind of Luke Skywalker looking character at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. I'm like, who is this man? Who yeah. is he? Follow me, and I'll teach you the ways of the Jedi. Follow me. And it's, and, uh, it's he leads them it? into like, well, it's David. It's David with a funny haircut from, from, a, from a 90s uh, a Britpop uh, band haircut. He does uh, lead them through a giant arena full of about a thousand charred bodies, though, which I would be very dubious about going into. Yeah, and they're just walking past all these characters which are just like burnt on the floor like in like poses of like help me. It's like, like uh, wow, okay. It's like Terminator 2 Terminator 2 Judgment Day, right? With all the bodies sort of yeah, yeah. turned to it's Something really ash. bad has happened and he's just walking through and now we didn't see this world in Prometheus um, obviously there was a lot more of a world but he's been there 10 years, this robot and when we were left though we were left with him with no body and just a head he had no body but he did though he had, he had the female <laughs> doctor and they're like I know how to uh, do the spaceship I can fly the spaceship and he was going to go off with her and apparently they did that then they crashed and she died it was very much just like a throwaway comment yeah he tells the story of the virus that wiped out all the creators uh, that he created, you know, and uh, well, he doesn't say he created it at this point, but he tells the whole story. He tells them about Elizabeth Shaw. How's he got um, a body again? Then? The Prometheus. Did she make him I a don't body? Know that one. She must have made Maybe him a body did. on the ship. But how does she? How could she have done that? He must have showed her do this, do that, do that, pick this up, pick that up. Because then he's like a perfect body again. Well, we get a little hint of uh, his his. his naughty mind here because he they tell him that there's over 2,000 uh, colonists on their ship and he says well 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 as soon as you he think, does that you, oh, you know oh, straight away oh, you're like oh, oh god well, you know you're not very nice from Prometheus and you've got a different agenda but you know the the his owner died 10 years ago but it's because he was a particular model of robot which is two more um, which they got rid of because people were scared of this particular model of robot because it was too human-like and it could have its own conscience and think for itself. And that's why when Walter comes along, Walter's like a next 
model up so it's like no we got rid of you uh, they got rid of you because they're scared of you and he doesn't really like yeah. it and it's because he has that where Walter is just a is yeah, on Aliens you Lance Henriksen he is basically that yeah character. he's just a normal bloke isn't he yeah 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 and uh, he says because when they meet for the first time he says hello brother and you, there's like a weird animosity between them yeah because they're like the same you know it's, it's like a, a Sega Mega Drive and a Sega Master System meeting is it I don't know, is it? No. No, okay, sorry. I forgot about what I was doing. Um, well, David yes. cuts his hair, because he's got long hair, like you said, to look a bit like Walter. Now, while he's doing well, this, I knew Walter he was doing that. As soon as he did that, I was like, he's trying to make himself, excuse me, we ordered. That's not some poor Daniel. Um, he, he's trying to make himself um, look like Walter. I was like, oh, no. Oh, he's going to do that. He's going to try and take the colonists from himself. And it's like, and he's been the whole time growing his little farm of eggs and shit, hasn't he? Like proper aliens. Yeah, because Walter, Walter finds David's weird room of, full of insects where he's been um, like, yeah, catching the bugs and the alien, the tiny xenomorphs, and dissecting them. And he's also been drawing bugs and stuff like that. There's, he's been making flutes as well. Now, this is a scene I wanted to talk about, Gav, because um, Walter Walter's looking around this room and David comes in and says, oh, I see you found my my little room. And he says, oh, yes, what's this? And he says, oh, this is a, a flute. Play my flute. And he says, uh, he, show, he shows him how to play it. And he says, oh. And he says, do you want to try it? And he says, okay. And he says, just put it to your lips and blow. So uh, he does, and he's not very good at it. And he says, well, look, I'll do the fingering and you do the blowing. Now, this scene, it, it writes itself, really, for comedy value. How they kept a straight face... Well, it's Michael Fassbender teaching Michael Fassbender to give a blowjob, basically. Now, how they kept a straight face and during this of, scene... And a bit of fingering. I'll do some fingering while you do the blowing. I don't know. It's funny that you mentioned it because you, you all picked it in notes. I didn't even sort of... I watched it, but I, th- I think I was too much in a highbrow. I'm I'm highly intelligent watching this film. I'm not going to put my humour down. And it's me, though. Come on, guys. It's me. You know what I'm like with my humour. It's just boobs and fannies all over the place, really, isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. I, uh, I didn't pick up on it, but you did it. it but, yeah, it was quite a... It was a strange scene. But anyway, getting back to the flute thing, if you remember Prometheus, he used the flute to get the ship going. Um, I think it yeah, he did something with it, didn't he? Yeah, and it brings the power on, which is a weird thing to have, but okay. In 200 years from now, we'll all just be using trumpets to start <laughs> our cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we get the back. This is where we get the backstory of what happened to the creators, the space jockeys. They were basically killed by spores that David released. Yeah, so David he wiped did out. it. He the, he fucking killed everyone on that planet. But where were they when they were there? Where were they when they were there? When Prometheus lands on that. <laughs> when Prometheus lands on that planet, they go looking around. No one's there. It's all destroyed. <laughs> Then, right in that ten years after they've tried to go off, David's been born back again. Then there's a whole like load of these big weird people, and then David destroyed them. How, where did they come from? I couldn't tell you that, but that's that's one of my um, this is the plot trouble holes. with this is the trouble with this film. It's just a little bit like what? Maybe they're going to try and explain it in the next one, but why would you not explain it there? Or I might have missed it, but it just seemed a bit weird. All this, it's like, oh, let's just tack that in. Let's just throw this in. So, okay. unless they came back to that planet during those ten years, like, but, but they didn't because they got eat, they got taken out by the aliens. They couldn't survive, did they? The last one was brought brought to life, and he died from that massive alien at the end of Prometheus. So I don't know. It's it's a bit weird, really, that they do that. But anyway, let's just go. Okay, cool. So David basically went and killed all of them. Um, you know, wherever they came from, he then destroyed them again. What? If, why did he destroy them? Because he wanted to test his uh, special, basically his weapon that he's, he's designed. So basically, he's like a, a a crazy person in the government testing, testing viral weapons on people. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, while we find this out, there is a xenomorph that creeps into David's little sort of weird castle that he lives in, and it attacks and starts killing people. Uh, it kills the girl from the crew, 
Um, the ground crew do manage to radio up to the Covenant, which is up above the clouds, like you say, and they do manage to get through to them. And that's and what that broad's like, I've never heard my wife's all scared, we've got to get down there, and they're like, it's too dangerous, must, but we're going to go there, like, we shouldn't actually go to this planet in the first place. I do like that. Yeah, yeah. I do like the fact that he's like, no, it's I've old, got to get, I've got to get the shit down there. It's romantic, own. isn't it, I suppose. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, the Zeno um, comes face to face with David, and they sort of, they're really sort of close to each other. What's that you're holding there? I just found it's a paperweight. It's a big green thing, but I thought it kind of looks like it could be a uh, alien in there, couldn't it? I'd be very worried if that burst opened and went up your nose. That's what she said. Oh. Carry on. Sorry, what? <laughs> um, a xenomorph creeps in and comes face to face with David. Is this where David and... becomes, becomes friendly with it? Well, they sort of are very close, aren't they? Almost senses like almost like David's its father or something. It's a bit weird. Um, but it? it does get shot. Billy Crudup, Crudup does shoot it. And then David's um, like, "Why did you shoot him? He was trusting me. He trusted me." He gets really angry. And it's like yeah. they're, they're just like, "Well, yeah, but that's an alien with like acid for blood. It's just killed loads of people." It's got, uh, you it's know, got a mouth in its mouth, mate. Fuck yeah. it. I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna kill. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? But Jesus Christ. Let's have a quick chat about aliens while we're talking about Yeah, let's about discuss that. it. So yeah. they've, they've got alien... So they've got um, acid for blood, number one. Yeah. They've got a mouth within a mouth, Yeah. number two. So they've got two sets of teeth. Yeah. One little nippy one and one big one. Yeah. Number three, they've got like a scorpion's tail yeah. with a spike on the end. They're huge. Okay. They're huge. They're about eight foot tall. They've yeah. also got claws. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They've got uh, no eyes, which makes them look scary as fuck. Which I mean, I guess means they can see in the dark. They're like radar or something. They're slimy. And the worst thing that can happen, to, the best thing that can happen to you is you get killed really quickly. The worst thing that can happen to you is you get a face hugger on your face, and then you wake up in a cocoon. A few hours later, and then it bursts out your chest. It's They're not great, are they? It's probably the worst predator ever, really, isn't it? Which could be. It's just insane. Yeah. There's something terrifying about them, isn't there? If you do put that up against, I know we've had Alien vs Predator, and there's two movies, and the second one which was abysmal. Um, but like, if you did actually just stood them next to each other, you're gonna go Alien as the winner, really, aren't you? <laughs> But Predator does use weapons, and it's a bit more like a like a blow. Oh, I'm going with. I'm not more, going with. More, I'm not going with weapons. I'm going with their natural body. I still think Predator would win because Predator's got that instinct. Yeah, I guess that hunter's instinct. I think the alien is more like an animal. I didn't mind that first movie. I didn't mind it. The I second like the one first was one, and I, terrible. There's a, there's a chance we might cover it next year. You know, the second um, one's so bad, to... man. I don't understand why it's so oh, dark as well. Me. You can't see anything. Why can't you see anything? Weird. The second one is so bad, and I'll tell you why. We're all going on off a bit of a tangent here. But I listened, I listened, I listened to a podcast like recently. So Sorry, I listened to a podcast recently with the cinematographer of that movie, Alien vs Predator Two. I wanted just to uh, scream at the pod, my my phone, going, "Why is it so dark?" But yes, yeah, carry on. Alien vs Predator Requiem. The problem with that movie it was it was never an alien versus predator movie there was a script like the story we get with some of the later hellraisers etc it was one of those scripts that was knocking around no one really knew what to do with it it was probably a slasher movie or something originally and eventually that someone said oh why don't we just chuck a predator and an alien into this and turn it into a a, a sequel to the alien versus predator movie that did all right at the box office so they they fiddled about with it, which is why it feels like a bit of a slasher movie because you've got a bunch of teenagers, stuff happening in the woods. It's all very dark, mm -hmm. but they just didn't have the budget for it. And I think the reason they kept it so dark is that you couldn't see anything, but it is probably the darkest movie I've seen. Not in terms of tone, as in terms of literally you can't see what's happening. It's so bad, that movie. Yeah. So bad. Yeah, it's awful. Absolutely awful. Getting back on track with this. I tried film. to watch it a bunch of times. Oh, yeah, I, I, of course, I, I, sorry. No, this I've, film's. I've tried to watch it. I've, I've watched it twice, and the second time I watched it, I watched it on Blu ray as well. And it was abysmal. It was so bad. Um, yeah, so uh, we, yeah, really we now basically have um, a mother hatching. Don't we? 
Mother. It's a little baby mother hatching. Little baby mamma mia. Mm, which is um, interesting. We do, we do indeed. Like you said earlier, Tennessee is heading down. He's driving the ship down because he he's found out his wife is dead. Doesn't he? They yeah. tell him his wife's dead and he is not a happy chappy about that. No. So he's heading down with his shit to pick them all up. Um, David reveals his entire... There, it's a plan now. Which we, we knew as, as an audience, we knew this anyway. He's been crossbreeding to create the ultimate predator, like you say, which is the fucking xenomorph. Mm. Um, and here we get... He takes him into a little room and says, come in here and uh, just have a look in this little damp cave and see what I've got in here. Oh, yeah. Of course. And have a little look in that, that, that pod over there and it opens up and you see go, that? the guy goes, ooh. See, and he goes, see that have a closer look. Pod. Don't, don't. Oh, why, would, why would you have a closer look at the weird thing that just popped open on the planet which Ridic. you don't know about? Like, what the fuck? The guy's just blatantly well, stupid. Well, of course, he um, the, the egg opens, something jumps at him, and he wakes up later on in the movie. Mm. And we know what's coming, but that is something that is good. It's because this is, this is a scene that we've seen so many times in so many alien movies. That works well in this scene because... We know what's coming. He doesn't. He, as soon as he wakes up, we think, you're about to give birth to an alien out of one part of your body somewhere or other, mate, and it's not going to be very nice. It's going to be pretty painful. But he's sort of like, what's going on? Where am I? And then suddenly, within minutes, seconds, it's like... It's really quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chest bursting, man. Whew. Yeah. Not good. Is that mother David's coming out? Wanted. Is that the mother that comes out? Yeah, that's where, that's, where mama, that's where Mama Mia comes out. Yeah, so that's the OG. And he's been waiting for a human all this time. Must be. Yep, yep. Right. Well, la- later on, well, though, it ends up with him producing eggs, doesn't it? At the end of the movie. It's really weird. He's producing those little yeah. eggs. There are, um, for me, there are plot holes. Yeah, we, we get to that. We get to that. We get to that. That's like the last shot of the film. Okay, go on. Sorry. Um, Walter, meanwhile, Walter, the other good robot, he finds Elizabeth's body, Elizabeth Shaw's body, which has been dissected mm. and experimented on by David. Yeah. And David walks in and says, isn't she lovely? She's beautiful. She's like a work of art. And this is where they have a sort of a, a chat. And then he says... I can't remember what he says to him, but he basically kisses himself, doesn't he? Yeah. And when he gives himself a little kiss, bang! Flute in the neck. Oh, he stabs him right in the neck with a flute. Oh, dear God, that is not good. So basically, I want... Walter uh, is destroyed by David, is what we're left yep. with. Yeah. At this point now, Mother is mother, rapidly growing very fast and big. Oh yeah, of course. Hmm. And and also while that's happening, face huggers start attacking the other crew members. Indeed. One of them gets some one of them gets the classic acid on the face. It's always good when that happens in an alien movie. Classic. Um there's a couple of full grown xenomorphs now. Yep. Now don't forget David isn't actually dead at this point. David is well, somehow that's it. David all of a sudden comes back and now Walter um no, no sorry, Walter comes back and David's just like, Oh, you're like a bit of a upgrade then from what I was. And he's just a bit surprised, isn't he? Yeah, because he kind of collapses when he stabs him with the flute. He kind of crumbles like a an accordion. Yeah. But then he he must come. He must have like, like something built into him. That's why he's the better model. Yeah. Well, well cause, David, because basically then... the ship, ships picked them up, hasn't it? Or was that soon? Uh, that's coming up in a moment. Okay. Uh, Daniel's the captain. She gets beaten up a bit by um, Walter, and he wants to dissect her. Uh, that's not going to happen, though, is it? No. We're not going to let that happen. Um, we do get a synthetic versus synthetic fight now, which is really good. They're throwing each other around. Water versus each other David. It's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a Terminator, Terminator sort of fight. Um, Tennessee finds the beacon, and he starts landing his ship. Obviously, he's got nowhere to land, though, because it's a really shitty terrain. So he's going to have to hover, and they're going to have to jump on. So they do start to board the ship, but just as they start to take off, little xenomorph jumps on 
oh shit, we've got an alien on the ship. But they know it go. though. And um, I... McBride sees it and he's like, look, we've got something, get out there. And actually one of them goes out there to go and uh, confront it. It's, it's, I, I quite like this point because it feels like she's so like, I'm so fed up with this shit. Just give me a gun. I'm just going to go out there and shoot it. And it's like, it's an alien though. It's not like just like a dog, a rabid dog or something, you know. I, I really like this action scene. Um, you really get the sense of them, like, because there's a storm approaching as well, isn't there? So they're kind of they're they're trying to they're fighting against the wind as they're trying to take off. There's a crane on top of the ship. She uses the crane to fight the alien. She swings it around. It's a really good action scene, and yeah, she's a bit of a is, Sarah Connor in this. It is really. quite good because McBride says that she's like lower, the, uh, let the crane out. And it's like if we let the crane out, it's going to upbalance the ship and make us tip, which it does. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's not but, too bad. But the alien's kind of headbutting. It's headbutting the cockpit glass at one point, isn't it? Trying to get in as well. Yeah, um, it's and really, he's like, God damn really it, aggressive. get this goddamn thing up. Yeah, yeah. It's a good. It's a good looking xenomorph. It's, it's CGI, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it, it, I, I, it's comes across okay though. I no point. Do yeah, I have any moan about feel. it. And I don't have one note of CGI in this, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, no I agree. I agree. Uh, it looked. It looked really good i think cgi is getting really good these days isn't it mm-hmm. you know for the most part i watched on a very small tangent i watched and don't judge me detective pikachu today uh which is the the pokemon movie with ryan reynolds doing the voice of pikachu but i'll tell you what the effects are insane in that how realistic will the pokemon look in the real world it's just you can obviously tell they're not real because you know that a big yellow mouse with electricity coming out of his butt isn't real but it just looks so real. Oh, that's cool. I don't know, man. It must be weird being a kid um, with movies like that, growing up with, like, because we're used to, like, fucking Tom Savini doing it all. Yeah, practical. Yeah. You know, uh, to see to see CGI as a kid, now you wouldn't know any better. To go back and watch an old Evil Dead movie mm. for someone who's, like, 10 now, must be uh, weird, right? Absolutely. On a, on, a, on a side note, yesterday I watched uh, Adventures of a Plumber's Mate. Oh, Jesus Christ. I quite enjoyed it, actually. If It's just boobs. 1970s London. Loads and loads of boobs. What's that got to do with CGI nothing. or... Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's on Amazon Prime just if you want to watch it. And just... also, I'm going to check out some more Adventures of a Taxi Driver, I think. Of that. Okay, go on. Uh, I've seen Adventures of a Window Cleaner. No, that's Confessions. Different that's person. Different, different movies, different person. Oh. Yeah. All right, Gab, you know you're softcore porn, and I don't. I'm sorry. Late 70s softcore porn, British softcore porn. Go for it. So they trap the uh, alien. Back to this. They trap the alien in a truck, uh, um, and they let they send the truck out into space. Uh, the second one impales the alien, um, uh, and it's dead, and they've managed to do it. It's a fucking great action scene. Uh, it goes on for about five minutes. It's really good. It's kind of a shame there wasn't more of action scenes like this in the, in the whole movie, really. Mm. Um, but I guess they saved the best till last. There was no certainly no sort of vacuums running around with machine guns or anything like that. We didn't really get much of that in this. Um, the survivors go to sleep. They all go into hibernation. And just as Daniels, the main hero, just as she goes to sleep in her hibernation she realizes that it's not walter that's on the ship and putting them all to bed it's david and he says just as she's Shh. locked in the capsule and she can't do anything about it because he says oh i want to go she goes i want to go back to that place um look she talked about to him earlier on like a, a place that she wants to go to and he says what place and she's like then she goes oh god it's not you i actually were around it because i was just like what did i miss what what happened but yeah and he says to her, a really good, and this works well in the world of Alien, considering the type of creatures there. He also says to her, shush, don't let the bed bugs bite. And that's a really good, creepy way of ending it. He sort yeah. of says to her, don't let the bed bugs bite. And then he says, I'll tuck the children in. <laughs> and then he's he's just going around. He's got this little capsule bit. Drawers are opening up where he's puking up these little eggs, isn't he? Well, he's basically smuggled a load of alien embryos inside himself, and he puts them all in into these drawers, and he's obviously going to go around, I should imagine, while the crew are asleep for the next seven years. He's got seven years to go around and impregnate these guys and create more aliens and do whatever he wants. So when he lands on this planet with them all, he can basically be the god of this planet and rule, you know, all these aliens and the human aliens or whatever he's turned them into. Um... 
What 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 what's his? And that's kind of it, really. What's... Okay, so what's okay? Let's go for the scenario. He produces all these uh, aliens. Okay, he's produced them. He's got this uh, this whole planet full of all these aliens. Then what? Then what's his plan? Um. Well, he's just very curious, isn't he? Because he questions his own existence, it, it's, knowing it's that he's not life, human. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so he's, yeah. he's seen so, if he, he can kn- create life himself. So he essentially, is he, he wants to be God or yeah, because he knows he's not a man. Think is the creator. He's created by yeah, he was created by man. He knows he's not a man. He knows he's not a real human. So why not be God? And he's very curious. He's a scientist, and yeah, uh, again, it's not really fleshed out really. And no. maybe if there is a third one, we'll get more. And that, it's but... a shame not to, because you got Michael Fassbender there. You could have probably, because a lot of these characters in there, I don't know who they are. I don't really care about them. Don't know any of their names. Don't know. Don't know if I'd see them again. I probably not recognise them. It's a shame. Like you could have done something different with this. I think maybe had less people and more Fassbender or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's just this movie. I agree. This movie's all right. It, it, it does. The, it does the job. But at the same time, I'm not rushing to see this again. I'll watch it again one no, day. No, it's not. Um, it's not a bad film. It's and I. This film. is my second watch of it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it nothing, both times. It's nothing to make you want to go back to it drastically, though. I will. No, once. I much prefer to watch Prometheus. Absolutely, and that's what I did the other day. Yeah, but that is Alien Covenant. Um, it is. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Definitely some plot holes. Yeah, yeah. I would give it. Uh, I would give it a thumbs up, but not a very enthusiastic one. Okay. Um, yeah, same as I'll give it a thumbs up because if you, if, well, if you've seen the alien, if you've seen all the alien movies already, and if you've seen Prometheus, you kind of should watch it. But that, like, so basically, Ridley Scott wanted to, yeah. So I say yes. Ridley Scott wanted to um, use this as a bridge then <laughs> to do another movie. Then that movie would lead on to Aliens. So he needs to make one more film, and that's gonna. So it's gonna be David has colonised and made all these aliens somewhere on a ship or planet. That must be what it is. Yeah, and then that's when they... Ripley and her crew come in. What do Ripley and their crew... They find a ship, don't they? It's not a planet, it's a yeah, ship. Yeah, they, they, find, they find the big ship that's in no. the Prometheus. <sighs> okay. So, but Prometheus, is, but Prometheus is already crashed. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what I think. Ridley Scott's getting old and should let Blumkamp come in and do something. I don't know. I want to see that if he wants to do are... this. I want to see the next film he does to lead us onto Aliens. Well, let's just yeah, do this. Do. Let's finish it up, even if it's going to be five out of ten mediocre. Let's just finish this whole thing up. Um, hopefully, we will. But at the at the state of play at the moment, I don't think we're going to have a lot of film productions going on for a little while. Um, but yeah, Man. I like the film. It's yeah, so it's, it's all right. It's all right. I, I, you know, I don't dislike it. But Prometheus is miles apart, and then like Alien, Aliens are really super good films. Um, this this is better than Alien Three and Alien Four for me. Um, it's better than Alien vs Predator Two. It's pro. It's on par with Alien vs Predator. I'd say or it's... less, maybe a little bit less actually. I prefer Alien 1, 2, and 3, but I'd say this is probably better than Alien Resurrection. Okay. Uh, nowhere near as good as Prometheus. No. And I think what I love about Alien vs. Predator is it's just a lot of action and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Whereas this doesn't have huge amounts of action in it, but there's a lot of good tension building in it. Mm. Um, so there we go. Let's get out of this egg movie I can't even think of a word then just said the word egg, egg. movie yeah alright then are you excited to get into the time machine I'm excited to get into your smelly time machine right should we do it let's do it you ready yep I'm gonna fit uh, in uh, 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 uh. what's this machine this is my time machine your man. time machine yeah for the next five minutes we are gonna be the time team. The time team. Whoa. Whoa. What's this? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, 
he's been dead a hundred years. Look at that. Look at that's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand. Oh, there's a dinosaur. Oh my God, look at that. It's something else. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I've got egg all over my face. Where'd that, where'd that egg fall from? Oh, sorry about that. Oh. Um, right, so we are in the last year of the, the 80s, Gab. I know, crazy. 1989. Yeah. So, I'm sad. So, we're going to be wishing it goodbye, because next time we visit uh, anywhere, it will be the 90s. But while we're here, let's talk about what happened in 1989. Yeah. Um, there were some tragedies. There was the Hillsborough disaster in Sheffield, which, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, is a big. There was a big football match in Sheffield in the UK, and there was a lot of crushing and rushing. And unfortunately, 96 people died, and there were over 700 people injured. And it changed the rules of um, football matches. They made things a lot more safer that for was... the people going to watch them because up until then, people just rush in and crush in. It's crazy, though, wasn't it? Like how many people that hurt and stuff and killed that's insane 700 700 yeah so that was one of the things that happened um ted bundy was also executed this year in florida uh in florida yeah we talked about him in the intro because i'd watched that movie uh with uh, zach efron uh yeah so weirdly he was executed in florida this year as well yeah um we also got the first this is a big thing the first gps satellites were launched and positioned in space Okay, cool. Just over 20 of them this year were launched, set up. So we had global positioning satellites all up there. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Another piece of technology which came out this year, which I was very jealous of every other boy at my school that had this, and I didn't have one, Gav. It's a little square, well, a little rectangular thing with a green screen. You might have played Tetris oh, on it. Or Super and Mario Land. Or Castlevania. I did I never had a Game Boy when I was a kid. Yeah, I had a Game Boy. I had one when I was older. Oh, oh man, it, but that, that dropped in 1989. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, I used to borrow my friends at school and play Tetris and all the games on there. I've got a feeling I swapped it for a Master System. Oh, man. Possibly. Good, good times. Good times. I'll tell you who was in the big charts, though. All the girls in my school were well into the new kids on the block in 1989. You a big big fan of New Kids on the Block? NKOTB, um, Hanging Tough. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I've got I've got their album. You got the right stuff. Right stuff and baby. baby. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah, I've got the vinyl and I occasionally play at the odd party, <laughs> um, um, just for shits and giggles. Um, but yeah, Hanging Tough was kind of alright. And I'm, I remember this specifically this time when this came out. I remember all the music. I was just discovering kind of music. My dad works in a pub. I used to get all the jukebox throwaway records. Um, and uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was discovering lots of things around this age. Actually, I remember a friend of mine who I remember going around her house and she had she had that playing in her bedroom. She's a couple of years older than me, sort of a teenager, and she'd record me movies. She recorded me break dance. She'd record me like the odd horror movie yeah. here and there, and just record me all these random films and go say, Take it, watch this movie, watch it. Okay, cool. And I specifically remember this playing at the time. So, yeah, it's a part of my uh, growing up. It's, it's, it's New Kids on the Block, isn't it? Really? What can you say there? An original uh, boy band um, before Take That, which is a UK sort of band that came along afterwards. And obviously, America had a lot of their follow ups of like Justin Tim Blake was in one. NSYNC, is that it? NSYNC? Yeah, I think he was NSYNC, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, so he got all that sort of came along. Well, yeah. Funny enough, 1989 is when I started first really buying my own music, really. Um, I bought my own cassette tapes with my paper round money. Mm -hmm. And that leads me nicely into the first of the films that came out, which are non-horror, because we're going to talk about the, the non-horror ones quickly. Uh, and that was the Tim Burton Batman movie, because I bought the soundtrack to that. The, the soundtrack Prince. and that, that Prince like, cut up. I, I was already into hip hop at this point. You know, I've been into it just a couple of years and I realised the cut up songs, the samples, the weirdness when you get loads, loads of bits put in and I remember one song on here which was the first or the last song of the album it being like that with all the samples from the Batman movie it was the last song, it was called Bat Dance, Bat Dance. and it's basically that's the best samples. thing about that whole album it's great, 
It's a great song. Yeah, it's I've very got, str- I've got that on twelve inch and actually played that at a party. Before, it's uh, it? it's the bit towards the end where Jack Nicholson says, "And where, and where, da, da, and da, where da, da, is the Batman?" Is the Batman. I love it's that. so weird, isn't it? But it's I, when, yeah, so when, Bat- Batman came. I was at a party and Prince Prince had died, and uh, I had someone. Well, a woman come, oh, have you got anything uh, by Prince? And I only had that. <laughs> so I oh put that God. on. <laughs> you could have put on Purple Rain I didn't or have anything. Purple Rain. That's, no, the, only, that's the only Prince record I own. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, so Batman came out in 1989. I went to see that twice at the cinema that summer. I was very excited to see Batman on the big screen. It was one of the first superhero movies, really, other than Superman, really. There weren't many superhero movies back then. These no. days, you can't walk five feet without stepping into a superhero movie. Um, other movies that came out this year, we got Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade oh. with Sean Connery. Just a fun movie. Um, we got Lethal Weapon 2. Uh Back to the Future 2. Goulash. Ghostbusters 2. Goulash. There's a lot of twos this year. Goulash. 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 Money Penny. Wish money. Did you make me some goulash? Make me some goulash. Wish money penny. Yeah, so Need the Weapon 2. Back to the Future 2. Ghostbusters 2. The Little Mermaid. Driving Miss Daisy. Dead Poet Society. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. My Left Foot. It's a weird year for films, isn't it? They're, they're kind of like films you're yeah. like, they're, they're all right. Some of them are good. So like Ghostbusters 2 is like, it's, it's all right. It's not Ghostbusters though. So, you know, it's a strange collection of films. Wow, sorry. No, that, that's kind of it, really. My Left Foot, Honey, I Shot the Kids. The only other movie, notable movie, really, before we get into horror, was uh, the Bond movie, which came out this year, which was Licence to Kill with Timothy Dalton. Mm-hmm. So I think, was that the first Timothy Dalton um, Bond movie? The first time he'd seen someone other than Roger Moore he was Sean Connery he, playing he him? He did two films, though, didn't he? I bypassed these. He did Licence to Kill and Living Daylights. For whatever reason. No, maybe he didn't do Living this, Daylights. This was the only Bond, for whatever reason. No, and this and some of the Piers Brosnan movies. I kind of just boycotted with Bond. I grew up watching them, but then kind of just went off of my first I started getting into like, hip-hop and skateboarding and all crazy shit and I just kind of didn't go back to them but then yeah sorry Bond no worries well that is your non-horror stuff but we are always back in time for the horror so let's talk about 1989's horror now this shit basically (laughs) so basically we're saying the last well this was the this was the end of the 80s. We had slashers. The slashers was the 80s boom, and it changed everything. And at this point, everybody had done a slasher movie. Everybody had seen every variation of a slasher film, and horror movies were born. The video shops, there's so many mass-produced movies because of the advent of video and VCR in people's homes. Mass-produced films got made, kind of like what we're getting nowadays with like obviously online streaming. And there's so much, it yeah, it got a bit shit. But I didn't realise the mainstream horror films Horror started to die out. Yeah, absolutely. Horror started like, to die for out. For the next two years, uh, and I'll go you'll see, what came you'll see out. it. Next two years, you, the list won't be that great. Well, I'll go through what came out in 1989, or, or most of it. Um, oh. What I will say is you'll notice just how many of these are sequels and franchises, okay? Um, but, I mean, some of the more notable ones, I would say, are Society came out this year, which I'm a big fan of. I like Society. And it's a yep, good movie. Yep, yep. Uh, Pet Cemetery, we've covered that. Um, and that that's a good movie, you know, Stephen yep. King. I, I really like that. And I quite like the remake, to be honest with you, as well. Shocker came out this year, uh, which is... Um, was crazy. that Wes Craven? Yeah, it's, a very, it's like two Both hours. It should be like 90 minutes. We're crazy. Going through electricity, a prisoner who's on death row. Uh, yeah, it's a weird one, that one. Yeah, heavy metal soundtrack. Yeah. Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Uh, Probably my least favourite in the dude, franchise. The one with the dude with the black boots. Who is he? What is the point? Fucking hell, no one gives a shit. Yeah, yeah it's a weird one, that one. Um, Puppet Master came out this show. And I, I, I'm not a big fan of the Puppet Master movies. No. I know there was a big following for them, but it's a niche I don't following. think they're that great. No, it's like, I think the first it's like one was, was probably the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah or the nightly. 
Howling Five, The Rebirth. No. So that's Halloween Five, Howling Five. How about a Nightmare on Elm Street Five? Oh that my! That came out this year as well. You're joking. No. I'm this is joking. this is really interesting. I'm sure it's for the listeners as well. Like it's interesting to see where we were at in the world of horror because it's gonna, just going to get better and better after Scream's released. Well, kind of. But yeah, go on, Karen. So we've got three number fives in franchises. How about Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan? See, that's all right movie, though. At least it's not fucking Part yeah, 5. Yeah, I, I like that one. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like that one, too. That's a good one. So, yeah, we're getting, we're getting a lot of just sort of recycled um, franchises here, aren't we? Nothing really major standing out other than, like, society and stuff like that. We've got Camp Sleep, uh, Sleepaway Camp 3. Uh, we've got Amateurville 4, The Evil Escapes, uh, Stepfather 2, um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, uh, and then they're just literally churning out Chud 2, Blood the Chud. I, I don't really mind. Just I sequel don't mind. After sequel after sequel. I don't mind Blood the Chud. I saw that quite a few times. But I've still never, I've never seen Chud, the, uh, the original Blood the Chud. Or Chud. Sorry, Chud. Uh, uh. Toxic Avenger Part 3. I mean, it's all just franchises and sequels, really. Um, Fly 2 is one I would say really stands out above a lot of those. I'm a big fan of the Fly 2. Big fan of that one? Um, I used to get sad for the dog. I was about to say, I remember you talking about that. I don't want to, sorry, I'm sorry to bring it up, Gav. It is very sad for the dog. Okay. <laughs> But other than that, that's really it. And that's why I said it's pretty shit this year. You know, so I would say that's if you're going to watch some of these, yeah, you're really w- probably going to want to check out Man- Jason Takes Manhattan, Society, Pet Cemetery, maybe The Fly 2. Um, but be aware that there is a dog that will make you sad. But other than that, you know, Shocker, Halloween 5, Freddy 5, Jason's, Jason 8. Yeah, what is going on? What, what was that in Howling 5? Just non-stop. As a kid, as, as a parent, can you imagine being a parent and your your son or daughter in 1989 is like, oh, mom, I want to rent Halloween 5. Oh, th- next week I want to rent The Howling 5. Next week I want to rent Freddy 5. Then I want to rent Jason 8. They must have just thought, what is this shit you watch? It's got <laughs> so many parts to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. What are your thoughts on 1989's horror selection there, Gav? It's pretty shit, really. Uh, don't know. It's, I, I said what I was thinking about it at the beginning. I know where we're at in the world of horror because I was myself a, I've been a horror fan since a kid and I'm really like on it. Without having the internet, obviously you had to rely on friends' word of mouth or if you could trust it or the odd magazine you might find. And I did get up the odd Fangoria magazine here and there so I could kind of see stuff was coming. But apart from that, it was like going to maybe a car boot sale or a video shop. The rental shop was the only place you're going to see where the movies are coming out. And I do remember to a point of being like, there's nothing, like, nothing good's coming out. Like, you know, yeah. It's, it's a yeah. weird time because they you tried don't to have really... that much. It's such a different time to where the people, if you're starting nowadays, like any everybody, you're still, the selection that we have with two clicks of a button is incredible. And we can read reviews and yep. watch people talk about their reviews in front of us before we decide to watch that film and spend eight hours before we even do it like in, we did in the video shop but it's so weird that we have that bit. but then we didn't and then you got that point you'd be like oh, I'll have to just rewatch fucking Rambo again for the eighth time or whatever uh, and going the other way if we liked a movie a lot so much that now we can listen to the director's commentary on it we can watch behind the scenes whereas all we had like you said was a copy of Fangoria well, and a video, a video that we might have bought if we're lucky to pick it up. Well, that's when DVDs came out. You could do the comment, uh, watch commentaries like stuff. Nowadays, you can't so much. You can go on YouTube, but um, I've got Alien Covenant on DVD, and I went on there because it had special features. So I turned it back on earlier. I thought, oh, best like, check out what's on it. And it was a commentary with the director, um, Ridley Scott, and outtakes. But I was hoping for a behind the scenes. I wanted to watch the the making of and didn't have any stuff it's a shame but you don't have that so much anymore the making of so we did have that though but yeah so it's so it's 
It's interesting that we've lived through most variants of cinema film. People don't have the attention span anymore, I don't think. Oh, my kids don't. Um, I think when DVDs came out, it was new and it was exciting. And I used to sit and watch every, you know, if a DVD had three commentaries on it, I'd watch them all. My kids um, are I don't have the time YouTube. now. My kid, well, my kids are tuned to YouTube for watching. They've got the control in their hands constantly because I've had to buy replacement controls because they drop the remote control because they're always pro prior, uh, po poised to press uh, uh, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next oh, thing. Oh, God. The other day, though. That is scary. The other day, though, Elijah and I sat down and we, I, said, I put on my Amazon Fire Stick, I plugged it into the TV downstairs. I was like, let's just find something to watch. And we went for a big long dog walk, and it's just me and him. The girls are being dicks, as they always are. And because they, they just ask him, and so me and him are hanging out a lot more because the other I've got a teenager now, Jay's a teenager, and uh, Daisy's getting older. Um, so me and Lodge are hanging out, and we sat and watched two episodes of um, Tom and Jerry, the original cartoon. Yeah, and it's great. Except the second nice. episode starts with Tom sitting on the train tracks waiting for a train to come along because he wants to commit suicide. Ends with Tom and Jerry both <laughs> sitting on the train tracks wanting to commit suicide. <laughs> and that's how it ends and I was like wow that's different and that's like 1949 or some shit weird but anyway kids that's don't have the attention spans anymore so it's interesting like sometimes I can get the kids to watch something sometimes it, they do so it's the right movie but you've got to be a master of making these films now for children and for young people because they're because of that attention thing you've got to have these things that pull them and keep them there it's crazy we didn't have that and well a bit of a rambling discussion here by the way no i think it's good though i think it's good um and i think that's um that's the difference and that's why we, perhaps we feel a bit older you know all of us not just us me and you the listeners as well sometimes when movies come out you feel older because you feel a bit more out of touch because things aren't Oh, I don't like that very much. It's, it's not like it used to be, and that's true because they've had to make things a lot like even just the fight scenes in movies and action scenes like you talked about. They're all chop, 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 chop. We want to see it drawn out, and mm. nicely all the punch. Yeah, you could you could relate that to everything really with the movie. I don't want chop, chop, chop. I want a nice long. I'm I'm patient enough to watch something like The Shining or something that's really long and drawn out. I don't need it to be chopped from scene to scene to scene to scene to scene, to scene really quickly. That works sometimes, but, you know, I, I I can still chill. You know, I don't have to have something diluted into a five-minute episode. But Jay is now 13, like I said, and the other week, obviously, we reviewed it, The Wicker Man. Did you listen to her review? Her thoughts? Yeah. What do you think of her She thoughts? said she didn't... She, well, she said she didn't like... Didn't think it was scary. She just thought it was weird. Mm. Um, and you were you were trying to explain the psychological horror side of it. And she was like, "Yeah, but nothing much happened." Yeah, and that's it's interesting. You just thought it was weird. Yeah, it is interesting, but she was happy. She's happy. Not she. They are happy to watch films with me with a bit of length to it, without needing to do that. So I think it might be Lige and Daisy where they are. I don't know. if Jay is the last of them. I don't think so. There's always going to be people who appreciate a film and can sit and do that. I just happen to have a couple of kids that are yeah. bouncing off walls at the moment, and that's what they do. Um, <laughs> I think, like, like, I've sat with Daisy and watched Bride of Frankenstein, and she loved it. And so, I don't know, maybe it's the right thing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, 1989. I don't know. 1989. Well, there we go. Last. Say goodbye to the 80s forever, Gav, because next time we'll be in the 90s goodbye so yeah. bye 80s bye 80s cocaine goodbye 80s hair and 80s jeans and oh god 80s it's red fur see you later 80s uh, we're gonna welcome hi a techno hyper color and shirts and weird other 90s mc hammer 90s thing. mc hammer and vanilla eyes and stuff yeah <laughs> so much all right let's go you ready let's get out of it okay cool let's do it bye the luck of the Irish is being packed and shipped to a little town in South Dakota whose luck may have just run out.
An evil, sadistic leprechaun goes on a killing rampage in search of his beloved pot of gold. So this is directed by Mark Jones. Not really directed very much. He directed a very similar movie called Rumpelstiltskin. I didn't even well, look up who uh, the fucking director was for this. Yeah. It stars uh, Warwick Davis, who, as we all know, was Willow. He also played in Ewok. He's very, and, probably the most famous of all little actors. If you've not seen Life's Too Short, um, Ricky Gervais show, has only seen one season, watch it. It's very funny. It stars him as a uh, very owner funny. of a uh, d- uh, little people. Um, almost said the D word then. Little people. Um, um, uh, actor agency. It's very funny. Yeah. So we don't say dwarf anymore, do we? No, the D word, no. Or the M word. What's the M word? Oh, fucking hell. I was trying to think of another word for a small person beginning with an N. But then I realised what you meant. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, this film also stars, famously, this is her first ever movie. This is Jennifer Aniston. And this was only a few years before she would become famous as Rachel Green on Friends. It's really funny to see her start, as a lot of people do, start in a horror movie. Hmm. Um... She is dressed throughout this movie in some extremely 90s clothing, patches on hot pants and, um, you know, big Reebok pumps. She's quite, how old is she um, this? Actually, how old was she, do you know? Uh, um, I can find so, out. Like, She's 16, probably like in her mid-20s, I would imagine. Oh, really? No. Oh, real, yeah, real, yeah, she was in Friends only a couple of years after this. Yeah, yeah, she still looks a bit younger than, that, than Friends, though. She is she... eleven years younger than, than eleven years older than me, so she's fifty three now. So that when this movie came out, she was probably about. Well, well how old was she? <laughs> Work it out. Twenty five. About twenty five, she was. She looks a lot younger than that. Oh, I'm fair enough. Yeah, she's twenty four. Twenty. She would have been twenty four when she made this. Twenty five when it came out. Oh wow. Okay. She looks a lot younger. Um. Yeah. And she pretty much plays yeah. the character. Well, she the reason plays she looks well, the reason she looks younger in this is because this was pre-surgery. She did have a little, little bit of surgery on her nose and a little bit of surgery on her face and her chin. Oh, a little bit of a secret there. D- I didn't know that. Ah, there she's, we go. she's still pretty hot. <laughs> um, so this movie, the reason we've obviously picked this is because Patrick Day's around about March. We try and do an Easter episode, so we decided... Uh, Let's have a look at this movie. Now, it did spawn a whole bunch of sequels, which we may or may not look at at some point, including Leprechaun in Space, I thought we were Leprechaun just gonna carry in on. the Hood. I thought we were just going to carry on with Leprechaun movies each year. Should we do that? See, because I... I right. Oh, I, Gav, can you... Oh, that's a Guinness. you got a pint of Guinness. A pint of Guinness. Yeah, I'm that's drinking... I'm drinking a pint of the black stuff. I did apologise to our Irish listeners beforehand, just well, in case. Well, can we get into this movie, then? Um, it starts off as a Lionsgate. Let's get right on it. It's a Lionsgate film, and uh, it, yeah, Warwick Davis. Uh, from the last shot, it looks shit. Um, I mean, from the first shot, it looks shit, and the last shot, it looks shit. Most of the shots look pretty <laughs> shit. From the first shot, it looks shit. It's uh, 
yeah, it is. I, I, at first I thought it was set in Ireland, but it's not. It's in America, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Budget is really low in this movie, but it's gained a cult following just yeah. because of the leprechaun and... Why though? What David's yeah. costume is but, terrible. Uh, his, the, the makeup's not good. His accent's awful. You'd think he'd do a better accent, you know. The thing is, they made they made one, two, three, four, five, six movies, then a remake, and then a sequel to that remake with Boris Davis back in the, the role. I'm not sure if he's back in the role in that. One. So there's a lot of movies that have come off the back of this. Well, so it just goes to show. I think Warwick Davis do anything though, won't he? Um, basically, this drunk guy's there. This drunk <laughs> Irish guy. Well, I don't think he'd do any. Well, I think acting wise, like he he's done some sketchy, sketchy roles, man. And like Life's Too Short is just commenting on that, and he's laughing at it as well. You know, so I'm not being disrespectful. Um, he's done loads of good stuff as well. He's done loads of stuff. Um, I think Warwick Davis is really wicked. Um, I think he's a very funny actor. Um, it's just such a weird thing, but yeah, it it kind of makes sense for this role, though, I guess. Um, and it starts with this drunken dude who's found. A pot of gold. Yeah, so his name is O'Grady, and he comes home drunk to his wife and says, "I, I found a pot of gold. We're going to be rich." He I caught a leprechaun, and I told he? him where. Yeah. And he, yeah, he says, "I found him, and I caught him." And he, he's, you know, when you catch a leprechaun, they have to tell you where their gold is. So straight away, this movie is silly because straight away, this man's caught a leprechaun. There's no sort of werewolf folk tales or fire. Uh, you know, history. This is just, I've got a leprechaun, I've got some gold. Great. Cool. So Mrs. O'Grady, um, she's uh, your stupid old drunken ass. What are you on about? Well, she then hears a little voice coming from one of his suitcases. It's a little boy in a suitcase. Sounds like a little child singing, eh, please let me out, let me out. She goes over to it, and of course, it's, it's the Leppy. He calls himself Leppy. Leppy. It's Warwick Davis in bad makeup. And, uh, there's some, I mean, again, I feel sorry for anybody Irish for this movie because he really pushed stereotypes. He sort of jumps out and says, where's me gold? I want me gold. And he's sort of jumping around the place like a Lucky Charms advert, isn't he? Saying, where's me pot of gold? She falls down the stairs, dead. This must happen all the time for the leprechaun, though. If this happened to be like the one time, like, oh, I've, I've just all of a sudden I've put my... Why is this pot of gold there anyway? Because the rainbow shot out. The pot of gold landed where the end of the rainbow was, yes. So the rainbow is shooting the pot of gold yeah. and travelling it around. This must happen on a daily basis every time. Does he have one particular rainbow that comes out? Or does he have lots of rainbows? I think, I think the rainbow... I think the rainbow reveals where his gold is. I don't think it's responsible for putting his gold there. But I think it just reveals where his gold is. It can't just be that once this has happened, someone must always be nicking his pot of gold. Well, that's why he's very tricky, isn't it? Okay, he's, so, so basically he's say he wants his pot of gold, and then there's a bit of a fight in shoes, isn't there? There's a bit of a fight, and then his the husband, O'Grady, hears his wife saying, I've made some tea. And it's actually the leprechaun that's made the tea. And the wife's dead. He's made dead. a nice pot of tea. He's killed the wife. And uh, his wife's and the wife's dead. So we do find out a couple of bits of folklore in this, and one of them is that leprechauns do love to clean a pair of shoes. I've never heard that before. I think it's something to do with their shiny belt buckles or shoe buckles. I'm not sure. But the other one that we get is that, like vampires with holy water, they are allergic to. Four leaf clovers, Gav, aren't they? Yeah, that old chestnut. Ah, of course they are. Um, so the O'Grady guy uses a four leaf clover like a crucifix. Uh, while he's doing that, Leppy, as I like to call him, Leprechaun, uses the dead wife like a ventriloquist doll, doesn't he? Yeah. He's very sadistic, this Leprechaun, I will say. And he's basically mocking his wife, mocking his dead wife. A grainy shoots him. He gets shot a lot in this movie, the leprechaun, doesn't he? He does, actually. He's a he's, he's, uh, um, regular Michael Mars, isn't he? Doesn't seem to affect him very much. Um, a grainy shoots him and he locks him in a crate and he puts the four leaf clover on top of the crate. Uh, but unfortunately, he has a heart attack and dies. He does. So the house is sold. And that is our opening. So we, there we are. Warwick Davis is locked in a crate. And he wants his pot of gold. Where's me gold? I'll get me gold. 
10 years later, we get a beautiful red Jeep pull up. This lovely, nice 80s Jeep. Yep. And this is where we meet Jennifer Aniston and her dad. Jennifer Aniston's character is called Tori. And she couldn't look more 90s if she tried, could she? No. Uh, they arrive at this house. It's a new house to them. Um, I can't remember why they're moving here. Do you remember why they're moving here? I haven't a fucking clue. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well, they move into this new house. Um, it's kind of a bit like... I get a bit of an arachnophobia vibe where they're moving somewhere to start a new... Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and it's around that era as well. Like, the film feels uh, kind of that sort of thing. Um, and, and they have to just move to this house, which happens to have Rorick locked in the in a box in the basement. I'd love to have a basement like oh, that, yeah. just to go look around the basement. It'd be well good to find shit like that. Except those big fucking spiders. I wouldn't spiders. want to find Warwick Davis. All those big fucking spiders. Well, yeah, they're not just big spiders. They've got tarantula. I mean, I don't know if this is common. In, I suppose it is in parts of America. I guess it America, must be, but... but it's a trench there, and they're just like, oh, yeah, it's all right, and just ignore it and walk off. Like, I don't know, it's a tranche there. It's like, you know... I know if it, well, we also, if it is me with Sarah, she'd probably like, be putting it in a tank. But yeah, carry on. We also now get to meet the hunky hunk himself, Nathan the Handyman. He is a hunky who, hunky hunk, isn't he? That, he's got that the hot haircut. Foot. That haircut, though. His haircut is it's something, phenomenal. It's something special. You could probably watch this film just to see the <laughs> haircut, to be honest with you. The fashion is great. At one point, I did pause the movie and say to Alice, come in here. The paintbrush shirt. Come and have a look at what Jennifer Aniston's wearing. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Just what Aniston's wearing. But the, the guy in the painting shirt, he is... He's brilliant. He's a decorator we'll to him in a moment. Shirt. Well, we've got this team of decorators, haven't we? Like, are they brothers? Or something? Um, Alex, the youngest one, is Nathan's brother. Okay. Otherwise, but then you've got the, him you've around. Got, and the other one's called Ozzy, I think. And, and that, he, that he's the kid's from one. Poltergeist, did you recognise? Which kid? That's the kid from Poltergeist. The young kid? Yeah, with a baseball cap. Oh, I did not know that. I didn't look it up. I'm going by judgement. Um, can you please quickly check that? I was going by that. That's yes. I... Visually, I was going by that. And I'm generally pretty good at uh, noticing people. I always don't have extras in movies in the 80s. It's fucking hilarious. I'm, I bet I'm going to be wrong. He was in Don't Tell Mum the Babysitter's Dead. Yep. Uh, he was not in Poltergeist, I'm afraid. He looks exactly like that kid. He does, yeah. doesn't he? You're right. He looks really like him. Okay, sorry. I'm wrong then. So this team of decorators... They're decorating the house, obviously, as the team of decorators would do. And basically, they're just bumbling around around the place they're not very good really one of them is trying to hit on jennifer aniston one of them is probably mentally impaired it's i would a bit say Oliver and hardy isn't it yeah laurel and hardy yeah <laughs> olive and hardy it's been a long day dude <laughs> olive and hardy over here <laughs> sounds like a chocolate maker doesn't it carry on um so Leppy wakes up in the crate because he hears the sort of noise of these guys upstairs. Leppy the leper. No, the the fat head, Ozzy. Yeah. Leppy the leprechaun. Ozzy, Ozzy heads downstairs because he hears a kid's voice in the basement. And again, it's the leprechaun. And he thinks, oh, I'm going to let this kid out this uh this crate. Now, like I said, I do think this character is probably a little bit mentally impaired from the way he sort of acts and is treated. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just think he is like a a child and a man's body for most of this movie it's very strange uh, which makes a scene later on when the leprechaun slashes his face really quite harsh but um, we'll come to that um, so leprechaun bursts out of the crate why didn't uh, his leprechaun powers ever very... burn out but break out of this crate before because he doesn't have his gold so his powers are weak Gav. but, but yeah that but, was, that what he said. but why, do you, why does he have him, his powers now he doesn't have his powers. So how did he, why didn't he break out the crate at any out. point? Oh, Ozzy actually did break him out. I did. I, I thought I might have missed something. Did he move the 40 clover then? Uh, the 40 clover had just dropped on the floor, I think, and fallen off the crate. But Ozzy basically breaks him out. But he can't gotcha. do anything with him because he, he hasn't got his powers. Happy with that? Yes. <laughs> so Ozzy rushes upstairs and says... 
guys, there's a, a leprechaun downstairs. He was in a crate and uh any yeah, time, he said something about his gold. Any time a guy like that comes up to me in his colourful paintbrush shirt and tells me there's a leprechaun in the basement, I'm gonna believe him. I'm gonna go down there and believe him. Well, they do go down there, but all they find is a rat. And uh they're like, clearly you're talking out your ass, Aussie, so there's no there's no leprechaun in here. They head back upstairs and lo and behold they see a rainbow in the sky. The effect of this rainbow is terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Ding rainbow appears in the sky. Oh look, you know what they say, guys? This is Aussie now. You know what they say? If there's a rainbow at the end of it is a pot of gold. That's where he's gonna be hidden. Let's go, let's go. Oh my god, really? So they all go running off to the end of this well, a couple of them go running off to find this rainbow and it and it sort of ends on like um an abandoned car, doesn't it? Yeah. And they go to the abandoned car and they find a couple of coins and then Alex, the youngest kid, finds a bag full of gold well, coins. It just appears they find one coin, and then so, the bag just appears. What does the bag appear? I don't know, Gav. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm actually guessing through this uh, review of this film I probably shouldn't ask you questions because I'm guessing you probably don't have the answers and we shouldn't look I too deeply into this I don't know if the director film. would have had some of the answers <laughs> this film exists no. to basically move the characters into a situation where Warwick Davis can kill someone brutally and then say a little rhyme in a terrible Irish accent afterwards <laughs> have you got That's some basically... of these rhymes to say? Yeah, I have. Okay. Okay. Um, now, that kid obviously accidentally swallows a gold coin, which will come into play later. I don't remember that. Because, much like, yes, he bites it to see if it's real, and he accidentally swallows it, because that's how stupid he is. I watched this movie. He bite a gold coin, he has to then eat it. I watched this movie while the kids were in the kitchen in it, and for the last half an hour, it, Elijah came and sat with me, and I was just like, ah, "Yeah, whatever, you can watch it. I don't think it's going to traumatise you, even though you know it's a horror movie and you're five years old." I'm like, ah. and it didn't, he, he didn't, didn't bother him. Besides. Well, the reason this, the reason the gold coin in his belly is significant is because the leprechaun won't rest until he gets all 100 of his gold coins back. Um, so towards the end of the movie, when they think they defeated him, they realise it's thought... in Aussie's stomach. I... So I was jumping ahead a little bit. Now. Well, I didn't think it was in anyone's <laughs> stomach. I <laughs> thought the guy was looking after it for the night. No, he swallowed the queen. Pay attention when, did he when he bit the it. Queen? When did he bite it? In the car. When he, when he said this, I'm going to find out if these coins are real, Alex. you got to bite them. So he bites it and then goes, oh. Uh oh! I swallowed. Definitely it. has to be slightly mentally handicapped <laughs> of some description because, like, that is something you don't generally do because you have. I'm not making fun of anyone mentally handicapped, but don't eat coins. Anybody, just anybody, don't eat and swallow coins. No, please, for you, the love of God. You probably shouldn't. And like, I didn't realize that. So then they give another coin to the guy to keep to check out. Overnight, yeah, they they because they give him one of the ones that I didn't yeah, know. The I missed the, the dude, I missed him eating <laughs> one, so basically, that's completely screwed up the whole movie for me because I didn't even realize this. And the whole time, I was thinking, why don't you just go to the shop and get the other coins? I was well off from this film. <laughs> so, they they hide they hide most of the money in the well. Um, and this is really weird. This next bit, he says, Alex says, This would be great, Ozzy, because. We can get an operation to make you clever. Okay. I, I, and Ozzy's like, yeah, that'd I've, be great. I've an got, operation in my brain. I've got to break this to you. Um, in my notes at this point here, I've said slightly Spielberg. And I, I'm, I've got to now defend these words to you lovely okay, listeners so, as I rub my yes, face in pain. You defend, yep. So before you defend that okay. comment okay. I've just explained that they think with these leprechaun gold coins they're going to get an operation to stop Ozzy from being stupid <laughs> you're going to have an operation and you're going to be clever again because you're just a bit slow aren't you an operation on your brain Yeah. alright Gav how is that Spielberg well this is going on is this the bit where it's like a music score dramatic music score in the background 
Is this the point? Is this that point? He talks to her and they're sure he talks yeah, to the woman. Yeah, I think they're trying to make it quite emotional yeah, about the, the thing brain is, operation. The the score is really good. Like, the composer, um, this basically was what the composer generally did. And then he was employed to do this, make this movie. And then they're like, do the horror scenes and do the action scenes. And he didn't know what he was doing. But this scene, or she, I shouldn't say just he, or they, or whatever, um... That the composer has done a brilliant job, and I was like, This kind of reminds me of Spielberg. And I don't know, it's because I thought that kid reminded me of the kid from Poltergeist, and I was just getting some sort of thing going on with it. I was like, It's kind of Spielberg in here. And I, in my notes, it even says, I can't believe I'm saying that. That's one of my notes. Well, it's wonderful that um, you got that from that. I don't think anyone's um, ever done a review of this film, and the word Spielberg's come into it. No, not not other than I wish I was watching a Spielberg movie. <laughs> that might have come into it. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. We are like taking the piss out of this movie, listeners. But it is a it is a silly, fun film. Like it's a cult horror movie, like horror comedy. It's more of a comedy, really. Yeah. But um, it doesn't take itself seriously in any way. Um, but it's just ridiculous at times as well. The decorator. So we cut to. The decorator yep. is teaching Jennifer how to, what's her name, Tori, teaching Tori how to paint, and then she does a run quick swipe with the paintbrush, and he's like, whoa, oh my god, you're like a regular Picasso, oh my god. <laughs> so what the fuck? She's painting. She's just painted up and down. Karate Kid did that shit. The fucking, he's not Picasso. Go oh my fucking god. I was going to say... Mr. Miyagi didn't get that excited when Daniel did it, did he? No. Oh, my God. A regular Picasso. Fuck off, haircut. Piss off, will ya? God. <laughs> Fuck off, haircut. Well, there's a brilliant bit where um, she goes over to get some more paint from the van. But while she's there, the leprechaun is under the van and Rubs he her strokes up. her leg a little bit. And she goes, she goes, Nathan, does get, it, off, what, get does, off my leg. Why did she think that the haircut guy from a moment ago has ran over there underneath the truck and gone on and started, started <laughs> rubbing her legs from laying underneath the truck? Why <laughs> does she I think that? See, he hasn't tried it on yet. She knows he fancies her, but she, and she's oh, are you rubbing? And so when he comes over and she says, something was there rubbing my leg, I thought it was you. And he's like, so you'd let me? That's not the point. He's like, oh my God. He's like, no, I know what it feels. A man's touch feels like on my leg, and her dad's like, oh, do you? <laughs> but it was the leprechaun, and we know it's him because we see him right off, and he's got a trike from somewhere, hasn't he? A little tricycle. Oh, he's, he's he no, rides off he, on he, it. He got the trike from earlier. No, he saw the trike earlier. He looks, he goes, ah, and then it cuts. <laughs> so, oh, to be sure, yeah, to be sure, it's a tricycle. Oh God, it's, his accent it's in and out is terrible. Yeah. Um, so, JD and Ozzy take the gold to a pawnbroker, and uh, he says, "Oh yeah, well I'll tell you what, guys, leave this one with me, and I'll you know I'll work out how old it is and how much it's worth, and and you know I'll let you know you know I'll buy it all off of you for X amount of money, and then obviously they can get their brain operation for Ozzy, which is great." So. They leave, and the pawnbroker is left um, with the coin. And this is where Leppy turns up. Um, and he is sort it, of jumps out and says, He's in the I, safe. I want me go. How, how did he get in the safe? Yeah, he's in the... How did he get... I want to know. I've, I've wrote, I've <laughs> wrote, my question was going to be to you. I was going to write, Warwick is in the safe, but my notes actually say Warwickshire is in the safe. <laughs> Warwickshire? <laughs> strange Warwick. the county of warwickshire is in the, safe. in the whole safe um i don't know how he got in there and why do you have to get in yeah. there is it just because he well, wanted to do some dramatic entrance yeah he's like freddie and i love the fact that they like what, what small things can we put warwick davis in oh that there's a let's get him in there <laughs> all right shut the door get in there warwick shut the door is, but is it there? can i breathe in here no just get in there shut the door don't worry about it well, he comes out of the safe and he oh, demands his gold God, immediately. God, this death scene. <laughs> this is where he says, uh, he sort of, I can't remember how he knocks the guy over, but basically then spots um, a pogo stick in the corner of the 
antique store as the pawnbroker is, and he jumps on that, and he starts bouncing towards the pawnbroker, and he singing. sings a little tune. <laughs> he says, he says, this old lep, he played one, he played pogo on his lung. <laughs> And then he continues to jump on his pogo stick. Imagine a blunt rubber-ended pogo stick. Anyway, it's got no, no blunt. It's not going to really penetrate. Jumps up and down on the wound person's uh, chest cavity, and it kills them. Yep, he kills him. He plays yep. pogo on his lung. But wow. then immediately after, he says, "Oh, look at the state of your shoes. Let's get these cleaned up. These are terrible." And he cleans his shoes for him and says, that's much better. Look at those. Why is he obsessed with cleaning people's shoes? It's like his weakness. I don't know. Isn't it? Yeah. But they... they it's his weakness. Then, they, then there's... um. After this, old Leppy the leper, Leppy the leprechaun, he uh, goes and gets himself on those uh, kids' cars, which actually has a little <laughs> engine in it. But it goes super, super fast. He even happens to knock over their car later and make their car roll over, which is a massive Jeep. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that in a minute. So he gets this really fast car and the coppers well, pull him over, don't they? Just before he gets the car, just before the car, I yeah. just want to say there's the scene that Warwick Davis is probably most proud of in this is where he flicks the coin up in the air and catches it and goes, one, one down, one down, 99 to go. And he's obviously because he caught the coin and sort of wank, winked at, winked at the camera. I always said <laughs> he winked at the camera. Ah, oh, it's my proudest <laughs> moment. I winked at the camera. <laughs> oh god! And he gets his really fast kids car, which is you put any kid in this car, they are fucking killing themselves. I tell you. And it's yeah. so fast, and uh, the police end up pulling him over. What happens? Yes, yes. They say to him, you there, do you have a license? And they think he's a kid in a costume. He says, I'm over 600 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, give me your license, kid. He's like, I ain't no kid. And then he uh, he leans in closer to him. And then, <laughs> then the leprechaun just grabs the cop's face and rips it off. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> but the cop's not dead. <laughs> No, no, there's a really massively long dragged out scene and eventually the cop's neck gets snapped. But it's so long. He, he runs through the woods with his face hanging off and you just hear the leprechaun really laughing music. and popping out from going trees. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and he's just going, <laughs> you'll never get away from me. And then eventually he drops down on his... Like, like a piggyback on his shoulders, snaps his neck. The funny there. thing is, though, the director's got, like, say, the cop and that, them to play it fairly fucking dark, and not dark, very straight and, like, to the point, like, you're, you're, okay, this leprechaun's gonna get you, okay, so you just play, like, your face has been ripped off by the leprechaun, and you're chasing him through the wood. you just got to play it like that. And this person is an okay actor, this cop, who's just a, a throwaway person that's going to be killed. And it's so weird. <laughs> it's just like, but you've got Rock Davis doing bad Irish accents and a really weird makeup and strange costume running around. Well, what's even weirder is the next scene with the leprechaun, where I don't know where, I don't understand this next scene, and I wanted to ask you about this. So we do get a little bit where we see that Tori and Nathan have gone on a date, and we'll come back to that date in a couple more back, little scenes here and there, but. We get a major scene now where the leprechaun f comes across, I don't know how many pairs of shoes, and just starts cleaning them all. I don't now, firstly, remember where have these shoes come from? I don't remember this. <laughs> so he's killed the cop, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we cut to like what feels like I don't know what where, another film because suddenly he's just going, ah, oh, better clean up all these shoes, I clean them up nice and shady. Nice well, and shady. he was going to the. <laughs> Presumably, my next note's about that they go to the house and the house is trash. So he must have gone to the back to their house looking for the gold, but found loads of shoes to clean up. Or is he at the... No, he must be, because he's already... He was on the road and the cops got him. So, yeah, he's gone to the house, I guess. <laughs> I think. This movie... I think this movie is, best, is really best enjoyed under the influence, is what I would say. Yeah. It's, it's got that fucking weird... 90s 
stoner vibe, hasn't it? Yeah. I, I don't know why he's polishing shoes. He just fucking is. I, d I don't know. Um... But yeah, they get back to the house. It's trashed. Uh, then there's a bell sound. Why is there a bell sound? What's going on there? Oh, it's his bell, isn't yeah. it? He has a little bell. He likes to ring. He rings a little bell. Why does yeah, he ring he a bell? What's he doing with his little bell? bell. Um... <laughs> Leprechauns ring bells. I don't know. I don't know. You did say that you were going to be asking questions I couldn't answer throughout this well, review. Well, it's, like, it's not too long to my notes. To my notes run out, and then I don't. And then I'm going to really be asking questions because I'm going to go, "What happened next?" <laughs> Even though I watched it, but you're going to have to help me on this. But go on, listeners, we're taking this um, very seriously. There is a, a bit now where Nathan gets caught in a bear trap, doesn't he? He goes outside the house. Yes. Yeah. And he gets caught in a bear trap. And this is where, where he actually realised it. From? I don't know. I don't know. And and at this point, uh, none of them have actually believed the uh, the deck the decorator who's going to have the clever uh, 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 clever medical procedure to make him better, more clever. Yeah, they don't believe this dude yet about the leprechaun. But at this point, the bear trap, he lays it, and all of a sudden, hey, hello! Uh, here comes old Warwick fucking jumping along uh, as as Leppy the lepra, leprechaun. And um, it's, like, it's the first in time we've seen, he, he, he's not telling shit. It's the truth. There's a leprechaun who wants his pot of gold yeah. back. And they all come out and they all see it, but they don't really well, discuss up, the fact it, that it's actually legit and there's a leprechaun. We, I'd think that if that happened to you and I, we'd go... That's a bit weird, isn't it? We'll have a little just chat about it. Well, I do respect that about this movie because I always respect it in a, like a vampire movie where they just go, well, these are fucking vampires, so we're going to have to kill them. Like, fuck what we believe, this is happening, or this is a I werewolf guess. coming out of our house, we're going to have to kill it. And they kind of just, I think they just accept it. Um, what is hard to swallow, though, is that the leprechaun, as he runs up to Nathan, is he starts singing, I got you in a bear trap, that'll make you shut your yap. I got you in a bear trap that'll make you shut your yap oh my god you know what I mean and then he says oh it looks like you hurt let's play surgeon and he grabs an axe and goes to cut off his ankle but luckily like you said all of his buddies come along and uh, and help him out I don't know where the bear trap came from though do you know where that came from um, no no Okay. No. Well, Ozzy calls the cops, and this is like the scene in Gremlins now, where um, no, the scene in uh... I kind of like this. Yeah, Gremlins, Gremlins, yeah. Yeah, where he says, you know, uh, oh yeah, yeah, right. There's leprechauns attacking. Yeah, of course, we'll come and help. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um. Oh, I know what I meant. I meant the scene in Goonies where Chunk calls up and says, um. Oh yes. Oh, yes. can you help and me? It's... The Fratelli's trying to get. And, and like, you know oh, who's he's... talking to? This is the like phone. when the Gremlins came to. It's Mike from Better Call Saul. Yeah. I'm breaking bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is that, and it is. This is this is no okay scene because the police station's all right. The actors at the police station are okay. They're all right. They do the job all right. Yeah, I mean, I recognise the main police guy. I'd seen him in other things, and um, yeah, they're just trying to like, yeah, yeah, okay, we believe you. Yeah, yeah. So what's he been in? Something else. I don't know. Mate, unless I'm thinking of another movie I saw recently which had the exact same scenario going on where they rang up the cops and it was certainly the 80s. It could be. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep going. Just keep going, man. Okay, well, they try and drive off in the truck, but the truck won't start, and that's because the leprechaun is under the hood. So he jumps out and he bites off Fat Ozzy's ear. No, um, this is it. And runs off into the barn. This is it. They don't believe him because later on, Toy rings back again, and they this time they're like, "Oh shit! Actually, this young girl's out there, and she says, problem. We need to get out there." So actually, the, all it is okay to see, and I did re recognize him from something. I don't know what, but yeah. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, this this bit was all right for sure. I agree. I agree. Surprisingly, um, yeah. Leprechaun runs off into the barn, and he comes out. He comes out in his go-kart. This is the bit you mentioned earlier. He comes out of the barn in his go-kart. Yeah. And he hits their big 4x4 four four with his go-kart. it rolls three times. What happens? It rolls over three times <laughs> to do that. And it's a, it's the law of physics wouldn't even allow it because the car itself, the, the, it's low down to the floor. It's kind of like where the... the the, a, 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 a third of the lower wheel is is how high it is and it hits it but somehow 
that makes it roll over three times. It's incredible. And they and they I just get out of the, they just get out of the crash and just wander off. It's like you just rolled over three times, but okay, cool. You just walk off. Don't even discuss that either. I guess that the leprechaun's magic can mean that he can smash you you over in his truck, in in his go kart, and you're well, in the he, truck. He, he I guess that's what it is. He's implemented a a farmer's fork at the front of it, just stuck on the front, and I think that's supposed to indicate oh, yeah, that that's what uh, tips it over. It's, uh, like I say, the law of physics wouldn't allow that, but yes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. So they all run in the house, and he chases them in. You get a bit of a point of view from down in his, his level. And then he gets his hand cut off in the door, doesn't he? And uh, the hand... I don't really understand the point in this. No. We do have a Terminator 2, two that, thing that, coming up, though, don't we? We have a what? A Terminator 2 moment coming up. Do we? Yeah. You know, uh, um, they the... Tori um, gets back to the police station, rings him up before the phone line does get cut. Oh no, it's after it get cut. They manage to ring anyway. Um, so they go, "Oh no, you need to get someone out there." The police chief rings the through on the walkie-talkie to the uh, other policeman who's in the patrol car, and it's in the policeman says back, "Yep, yeah, no roads, no roads." And it cuts to it. It's Warwick Davis doing the voice of the policeman, and that's a Terminator two. Oh uh, yeah, it? <clears throat> I see what you mean. I never even thought about that because then he after oh, it's the first thing towards, I saw. He, the yeah. eye because he's yeah. lost his eye at this point, hasn't he? Yeah, so and he p- takes the eye out of a dead cop, puts it in his head. And uh, he says, uh, "An eye for an eye." At that point, Elijah's watching. I was like, "Look away," and I had to make him look away. And he said, "Is it finished yet?" And, and it went on for so long. I was like, "No, no, no." <laughs> Yeah. Now, there is a bit here which really drags on, which is where Leprechaun is in the house and he's popping out of the floor, he's popping out of the cupboards and the kitchen, and it does go on for about 10 minutes or so and it really didn't need to be longer than about a minute, this scene, and it really bored me, this scene. Yeah, I've and got, I was I've just got waiting now, for my it. notes are, uh, the film just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and uh, uh, it's just the same stuff over and over and over, and... um yeah, I've started running out of notes at this point. You really feel like um, they ran out of ideas at this point because they're just, there's just nothing happening. It's just the leprechaun popping out of different cupboards and nooks and crannies and scaring them around the house. Hmm. Nothing's happening. He says a couple of things like he pops out of the oven and he says, we're cooking now, kids, and things like that, but nothing's really going it, on. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. It's a real slump in the movie. <clears throat> Until they realise the reason he's still after them is that Ozzy has one of the coins in his belly. Of course he does. Um, so Ozzy is like, well, I'll sacrifice myself. Let's let him kill me to get the coin out of my belly. I don't know why they don't just say, look, give us a couple of hours. He'll have a shit. And then you can have the coin then, Leprechaun. And then you can leave us alone, all right? Yeah. Why didn't they say that? Yeah. Don't know. That kid looks like he's going to shit any minute. Just let him have a shit. Shit out the gold coin and then... He looks like know. he's going to have a shit. Yeah. He's all sweaty. Looks like he needs a big shit. I don't know. But um, anyway, let's let's get more 90s because how do you get more 90s in this movie? You put the leprechaun on roller skates. Brilliant. And he's... And he starts riding around, he smashes into a fence, and he leaves a, sh- a hole in the shape of the fence, in the shape, sorry, a hole in the fence in the shape of it, the leprechaun. So it's just like a Warner Brothers cartoon, though. Um, so that's brilliant as well. It was good to see that. Uh, they arrive at an old people's home. Is it an old people's home? Is it a hospital? Is it a sheriff's office? I don't know what it is, but they arrive somewhere, and the leprechaun gets a wheelchair. See, this movie just goes from weird to weird. At this point, and the now I don't chasing know. Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, I don't know what's going on now. You have to let me know. <laughs> now, I've got a fun, a fun fact for you here, Gav. Um, when they filmed this scene, they, Jennifer Aniston had to practice, she had to learn to run in slow motion because Warwick <laughs> Davis was unable to properly operate the wheelchair, so he couldn't keep up with her. So she had to run in slow motion because he couldn't oh, keep up with those her. Those are the outtakes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, it's... Jennifer, you're going too fast. Warwick, why are you still in character? Down, I'm always in character. Don't blow my character. 
Um, oh yeah, that's why they go to the old people's home. They go to find O'Grady to ask him about this, the old man who survived. He didn't die of a heart attack. He did survive and he's in an old people's home. So they go there and they find him in a room um, and he tells the, he, te he tells Tori, four leaf clover, that's the only way that you'll defeat this little bastard. So they all go off and they go hunting for a four leaf clover in the field like you do. Um, they, I think, yeah, they find one, don't they? That's great. Good stuff. Uh, they set up the bear trap again in the... Sorry, they set up a trap in the barn with the bear trap. Uh, Leprechaun finds out the coin is inside Ozzy. This is where he wants it. And they basically trick him into... They get the catapult. They get the four-leaf clover on a rock. And I love this bit. This is where JD fires um, the four-leaf clover at the leprechaun. And as he fires it, he says, Fuck you, Lucky Charms. And just fires the catapult and it goes straight in his mouth and he melts just like the witch in the wizard of oz hmm. and he evaporates he falls into the well uh, he's just about alive he climbs he starts climbing back out again i don't know how this thing is so fucking indestructible so in the end they just pour a load of petrol down the well and set it on fire and that explodes and that's the end of the movie that's right that was the end of the movie i don't understand how they all survived but well, there's a lot to digest in that, Gav. First of all, hmm. the fucking leprechaun is indestructible. And I get I get that they're magic, but come on. You shoot it, you blow it up, you, cut, you run it over, you poke its eye out. It's coming at you non-stop, really. Even when you give it the thing that it's most afraid of, the, the four-leaf clover, it's still barely alive, like melted, but it's still coming after you. Yeah. It's not a Terminator. No. It's Warwick Davis. It is Warwick Davis. It's fucking weird. But the movie, I've got to be honest, I do have a lot of fun with this movie. I've watched it probably half a dozen times in my life now. It's so ridiculously silly, and it's so it's one of those so bad, it's almost a bit good movies. Okay. Um, and I'll definitely watch it again. That's me being honest. I will watch this again in a few years, probably. Wow. When it's on, like, the horror channel. Wow. You know, it pops up on something. I'll, I'll chuck it on in an I, evening I, and watch it. I, I don't think I'll probably ever watch this film again uh, while I'm on this planet. I don't know if I'll be on another planet watching it. <laughs> but I just don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know if I'd give it a thumbs up or thumbs so, down. Uh, I, I don't know. What are you giving it? Come on, what do you think? Did you, did you enjoy it watching it? Mm. it? It, I enjoyed it more than the Critters films. <laughs> but it is only the first one. So, I think in a couple of years... We've got Ice-T in a... We've got Ice-T in one of them coming up in a few years' time. I'm excited by that. Um, but it's going to be a while till we bloody get there, isn't it? We could do iced tea impressions where he meets Warwick Davis. Oh, man, you could be Warwick and hey I could man. be iced tea. Hey, man, I was a massive fan of hey man. Uh, Star Wars, man. I might have motherfucking tea. <laughs> Who are you? Um, I... I give this a little a little wee person's thumbs up, a little leprechaun thumbs up there. That's what I give this one. Because to me, it's a little bit of fun. You're literally going to like so it. many un PC realms here. Little people and Irish accents sort of glow with you. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll give it, I'll be, I'm not going to give it a little person thumbs up because I think I'm going to give it a Jeremy Beadle thumbs up. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm giving it a Jeremy Beadle thumbs say down. That I am PC and you said that. Because Jeremy Beadle just had I, one little I, hand. At least he had one big one too. He was half and yeah, half. And Warwick Davis has got a little hand. Yeah, so is a leprechaun. I don't know. I can't get. I can't. I, I don't know. I can't suggest that someone watches this. I, I can't do it. My reputation's on the line here, Daniel. I can't do it. So, so the reason that he says "fuck you, Lucky Charms" towards the end of it is because they asked Lucky Charms if they could use their cereal, and they said no. They said not in a horror movie, not with killing, not if a leprechaun's going around killing things. So they changed that last sentence from whatever he was going to say 
Uh, to fuck your lucky charms as he killed him. So, uh, it's a little bit of trivia for you there, Gav. Yeah, a bit of a fuck you to lucky charms, like it said. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, cool. you That's... are giving it a little thumbs up. I'm giving it a leprechaun thumbs no, up. No, I'm not. I'm not. I can't it's a silly recommend movie. it. Okay. So, so that you're no, I mean, yes. Yeah, I can't recommend it, but I don't really give it a thumbs down. It was, in, it was kind of entertaining, but... Uh, oh, where we could get to next, <coughs> though, Leprechaun Two. What's the story of that then? I would, I would say, um, to anyone who's interested in watching this movie, definitely try and get yourself under the influence of anything you want. I'm not telling you to do or not do any, anything for the record. We're but if you're going to watch Leprechaun, um, anything, okay, anything you want. Fuck it anything um leprechaun 2 do you want me to tell you what it's about yeah 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 1994 it came out the following year so this is what we'll be covering next easter on his 1000th birthday the evil leprechaun selects the descendant of one of his slaves to have his bride leaving it up to the girl's boyfriend to save her so he basically picks one of his slaves from back in the day one of her descendants and he's like i'm gonna marry you so the boyfriend has to save her. All right. So that's what we're looking at next year. All right. <laughs> same time, same place. Next year. Excited about that? Yeah. Well, hopefully there won't be a fucking <laughs> pandemic sweeping across the world, making you know. So, <laughs> so it might be slightly more uplifted with this. But yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed uh, reviewing that film with you, guys because. It's just talking about it with somebody else. You just can't quite believe that this film has been made. It's brilliant. I don't. I don't know if I ever talk about this to someone else again. I did talk about it with Sarah. We discussed it actually, but yeah. Um, he played Pogo on your lung. Let's get out of here. Can we? Um, can we have some World of Strange with Bill? I think Bill's coming in. Bill, get us out of this little leprechaun World of the Strange. Bill, hi. Welcome back to World of the Strange. Change well to be sure. So it's our March slash Easter slash St Patrick's Day special. So I've got, as, as always with me, Gav, I've got um, a little story about something related to uh, one of our movies that we covered, and that was the Leprechaun. Brilliant. So I'm going to be talking to you about a real life Leprechaun. A real life one. You ready for this? Go for it. Oh yeah. Can't wait. You know them for their snappy green suits, um, their the little hat with the buckles on the shoes, little fairy folk, Irish legends, often imitated. You know, people know that if you catch one, you'll get his gold. Right at the end of the rainbow, you know yep. all that business. Yep. Well, in 1989. What can only be described as evidence of a leprechaun was found on Carlingford Mountain in County Louth alongside a small skeleton and a collection of four gold coins. This is in the Irish Post. This came out March last year can in the you, Irish Post. Can you, just, can you just go for it again for me, please? <clears throat> Indeed. 1989... Yep. Uh, just just near a cave on a mountain in Carling, Carlingford Mountain, in fact, in County Louth in Ireland, they found a small green suit, a very old green suit, alongside a small skeleton and a collection of four gold coins. You're joking. And there is uh, a video of them finding it, which I will post on the Facebook page, don't worry. What year was this? Uh, very bad. Uh, 1989. Perfect for the episode, then. Oh, God, yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Could be time, team. Okay, yeah. That's weird as fuck. Now, sceptics 
So a lot of people say that it was a hoax. Well, the skeleton was um, was was investigated, surely. Yeah, so it was looked into. They could find no no one no one ever came forward. Um, there's a lot of evidence to say maybe it was an ancient Irish race of little people. Yeah, but didn't they test um, the skeleton? Was it just I like it doesn't say about. It. It doesn't say that. Because they'd, they'd known if it'd been it just, a person or a I child. And then, okay, cool, it's not a child, it's going to be a, 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 a little person. Surely, then. But that's so weird as fuck. So it, this this can't be real. Well, I don't think it's real, but. but what it if was it definitely was, flat. though? That it's, was definitely. So they did like a video, so it's like some sort of found footage fucking thing, or was it like a news report? Uh, yeah, there's like a grainy uh, news report which I'll post up. Uh, I'll post the article from the Irish Post that I came like, out I last like March. It. I like it though, man. I like it. It's dark with a bit of like, ooh, what, what is it? Oh, sorry, I'm just going in some bad accent type sort of thing then. Ooh. Um, in 2002, they came across another discovery. Yeah. That prompted similar. You know arguments um, th that was that they located near a stone wall in Carlingford so in the same area they came across some more gold coins so they find these similar gold coins again uh, okay near a wall a wall near where they found the skeleton um, a man the man who found them said that the coins had been given given them the ability to com communicate with the Carreg, I don't know how you pronounce that, I'm sorry Irish, Irish listeners, C-A-R-A-I-G. The Carreg is an elder being who served as the elder of the final 236 surviving leprechauns who secretly live in that region of Ireland. Okay. So this man claims to have been in communication. <clears throat> now, now the story sounds a bit mental now, doesn't it? But he claims to have been in communication with the elder of these these leprechauns. There's 236 of them surviving, living secretly in this area in uh, Carlingford. They found a skeleton on a mountain in 1989 with a little suit near it and some coins. Okay. What do you think about that? I think, well, <clears throat> straight away, sceptically, I'm going like, yeah, that's fake, definitely. But I want, uh, I'm like Mulder in uh, X-Files I want to believe um, I think that sounds fucking I like the idea of that the little an old green suit coming in from the back in the day like this really old material taking like a, a, a skeleton of a little person and some gold coins yeah, that's fucking rad but ain't no way well well the plot thickens Gav okay well so every year on the second Sunday in May um there's a an annual Carlingford National Leprechaun Hunt. Just a silly game that they play. A every leprechaun year, hunt. Is, I would have gone to a leprechaun uh, hunt. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, but in 2009, Ireland uh, afforded the um, the the 236 surviving leprechauns. They were afforded protection under the European Habitats Directive. So they've been placed under protection, like certain species. So, like, like, like foxes, you can't go hunting for leprechauns. Yeah, don't eat a peacock. And don't shake a leprechaun by its foot. Or whatever. That's hilarious. It's good, isn't it? But yeah. it's, I think that's to like, add to the, the tourism. I, I think um, that... There's even a sign. There's even a sign that says European Habitats Directive. Plants, wild animals, leprechauns slash little people are protected in this area. Please tread lightly. Hunters and fortune seekers will be prosecuted. That's hilarious. That's an official Irish Irish sign up on uh, on the gov from the government. I'll, and this is again, this is on the the, the, the post I'll share. I think that's brilliant. <clears throat> I, I, I think that's really funny. Very good. But they didn't need to say little people. They just only need to say leprechauns. Little people, the re we do have little people. <laughs> like, what? Like, but it, I don't know, you didn't need to say that. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah, I do agree. Um, I'm very excited to post this up to see what, um, particularly our Irish listeners, 
think of this guys anyone from ireland or anyone who's been to ireland do you believe in leprechauns have you seen a leprechaun have you found please coins or a little please tell us some leprechaun stories because at some point we're going to do an ireland episode an irish episode where we will look at we are movies folklore um and uh well the strange would be really good if we could uh, get some leprechauns so let us know if you you know What's going Experience on? There. Have you woken up one morning and all of your shoes were inexplicably polished? Yeah. Did that happen to you? Yeah. Or Warwick Davis jumped Did out. Did someone? Of safe. Hey. <laughs> I went to work and I opened my lunchbox and Warwick Davis was in there. <laughs> hey. I thought, oh, for fuck's sake. Hello, I eat your sandwiches. <laughs> now I want to be called back, you bastard. <laughs> I don't have the gold. I it don't was never chance, had but... any gold. I don't know what you're, I think you're insane. You're living in a movie that you made once. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh my god, go away. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. So, final thoughts, Gav, on the uh, Carlingford Leprechaun. What do you think about this? I think it's rad as fuck. <clears throat> and, um... <laughs> and, uh... I think it's rad as fuck. Yeah, and I, I'd like to, uh... Like go leprechaun hunting. That's Dude, it. I'm there with you. I'm thinking one of those butterfly nets that you see in a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah, and we're trying to catch yeah. them. With, well, well, you, you know, have that. Over each other. You <laughs> have that, and I have like a a, a big elephant gun, like this ridiculous gun, which is like a big horn. I can jump it. <laughs> yeah, and that's my gun. It's only got one bullet. <laughs> Are we in a Warner Brothers cartoon while this is happening? It sounds oh, yeah, like we are. It sounds effects. like we're hunting the leprechaun. Yeah, we're gonna have sound effects. I, I, I actually, <laughs> I actually can add some those sound effects to this if you like. And now and again, the leprechaun's looking at the camera, going, "Ah, these two will never catch me, and they'll never get me lucky charms either, or me gold." And we're like, I mean, you just... come in first, that leprechaun. Come on. over here, Dad. Like, Let's go I'm over here. <laughs> just bumbling I'm... around. Got me net. I catch it, and then it's like a cameo from Daffy Duck. I'm like, I got it! And then it's like, it's not me, it's Daffy Duck, you stupid. And I'll like, shoot oh, you in the it. Ass. Sorry, I thought you... Yeah. Anyway... Oh, that'd be brilliant. It would. Guys, if you want to see that cartoon, let us know. Anyway... <laughs> I've had too much Guinness. Shall we get out of it? <laughs> I've had no Guinness. Definitely, let's get out of it. <laughs> Bill. 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 Take us out of here. Bitty witty. Come on. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. We're back. Yeah, that was episode 89 of the podcast on Onto Del Our Easter slash St. Patrick's Day special. Looks like we're going to start doing the uh, Leprechaun franchise over the next few years then. Dan's every Easter. Just, off, off air, Dan's just uh, shared with me the uh, the the delights that for the next <laughs> few years <laughs> of my life that I'm still on this planet <laughs> enjoying every moment I've got I will be watching. And they seem... Leprechaun movies. They sound lovely. <laughs> It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Well, I enjoyed this episode. It made me laugh a lot. Uh, Two very different movies, like you said, Gav. One very highbrow, almost a bit pretentious, what one might say. Science fiction movie from the Alien franchise. Mm -hmm. And a very silly stoner comedy horror with Warwick Davis running around singing little rhymes at people as he kills them. But that's what we love to do on the uh, on the podcast on today. We love to yeah. sit back and put a couple of movies together that are they, they often silly. Could have called that instead of Prometheus, a sequel to Prometheus. Pretentious. What a pretentious. <laughs> or what about Leprechaun in Space Two? So it's Leprechaun Seven, and this time he goes to space to fight the Xenomorphs. Is he? I'm happy to watch that. (laughs) (laughs) I'll do it. I'll do it. I would be happy to watch that too. Yeah, absolutely. I'd Um, be very happy to watch that. Yeah, so what's coming up? What have we got in the next uh, couple of episodes, man? So, episode 90, we are going to be covering infections. And this is obviously quite relevant to what's happening in the world. Um, 
28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later. We'll be doing both of those movies. It's going to be fun. Yep. Very good movies. Yeah, I, I'm looking yeah, forward I'm a big to fan of the it. sequel. I, I, know I, people, like, I quite people like a sequel. Like Robert Carlyle. Yeah, it's it's better if it's Big Speed After from that, Transpine. That would have been better. But yeah, Karen. He would have run quite quickly away from that. Uh, no, he wouldn't have done actually, would he? He would have run on heroin. Um, <laughs> episode 91. It's going to be a lot of fun. Creep Show 1 and 2. It's going to be a lot of fun, that one. Yeah. Lots to talk about. Really funny movies. Great movies. And uh, episode 92, we will finally be doing our cannibal movie. So we're going to be covering Ranavus. Ravenous, I should say. And the classic, but a little bit hard to watch, Cannibal Holocaust. Yes. We're going to be looking at that and discussing that. There's a lot to talk about with that film particularly and how it was made, etc. So that'll be interesting to cover that. Be, yeah, it's, it's, so that's our next three episodes. Interesting now. watching <laughs> old Cannibal Holocaust. I've only ever seen it once back in the day, but yes. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. I may look um, away at a couple of never bits. Any... Like the Turtle Show, I'm, I'm going to look away just so, so I don't need, I know yeah. what happens, I saw it, so I don't need to watch it again. Um, anyway. Yeah, fair enough. But I think it's an important movie, and uh, in some ways, uh, not necessarily in good ways. Oh, and you, it, you it can argue. It. About it. And there's a lot of stuff around it. Argument. It's the first found footage movie, so you know we can um, discuss a lot of things. Definitely, it, actually. Definitely. So that, that's our next three episodes. So a lot of big blast this has been. Um, just to remind you, I uh, will be also guesting on on Argento. Um, Cinema Bites doing oh, Jamie the, the show, Masters yeah. of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren uh, so we'll bit. share that Karen, oh sorry Karen. am I breaking up no, I, I, I was just uh, repeating what you're saying RJ McCready's show Bites Size Cinema where you are talking Cinema about Cinema Bites what are, you, what, what are you talking about Masters of the Universe oh yeah he man sucking off a skeleton okay that'd be good <laughs> <laughs> you won't be talking about that. No, 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 no. Um, so, just a bit of admin to do before we wrap up the show. As always, we are a proud member of Legion Podcasts. You can find us on the legionpodcast.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook under the podcast on Haunted Hill, or you can go to the Legion Podcast uh, Network page on Facebook. Uh, we're also available on podknife.com, Podbean app, Podcast Addict app. Apple Podcasts or anywhere else that you might download or listen to or stream podcasts. We're generally everywhere, uh, including now Spotify and YouTube are two new places or newish places that you can find us. We're also on Twitter at that's Haunted Podcast um, and we're on uh, Instagram, which is uh, hashtag the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. Always a bit of a mouthful, that one. And finally, we're on Patreon. So if you want to donate or help out in any way, you're in a position to do so, please do. Um, we'd love it, even if it's just a pound a month. Yes. Um, as you. always, thank you to our patrons, RJ McGreedy and Lemiao. Thank you very much. And that's us in a nutshell. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely appreciate the people. Um, you, know, uh, you guys give us, give us some books. Uh... Thank you, everybody, for getting us to almost 100 ep- episodes now. We're really getting through these and I know it's been six and a half years but yeah, I, I would have we, thought, we just do this as a hobby but we, we do we do like doing it well I would have thought we probably wouldn't have put in the effort uh, to do it if there was not one sole listener I guess you know I probably wouldn't put in the the, uh, the production you know to try and make it sound nice nice and crisp, yeah, but, nice uh, and crisp. We certainly get a, a good number of listeners every episode and every month. Um, we, you know, we do get we get we do share the figures and in amongst the network, and we look at how many you know views and streams, etc. So we are getting listeners, and we do love it, and we do thank everybody that does listen or stream or share or, or anything, or even just comment. And whether you listen to every episode religiously or you just pick out the ones where it's a movie that you want to listen, hear us talk about or something, we just really appreciate you guys doing it and getting us to the point where Gav and I are currently discussing you know what we're going to be covering for our 100th special episode really because 
you know, that is a special, that is a, a milestone, really, you know, so here we are. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for listening to our sexy, sexy voices. Indeed. Well, um, Gav. Yep. It's a good night there from the leprechaun. And it's a good night from another leprechaun. Oh, brilliant. I don't know. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to try. I'm, I'm tired. I can't even start attempting to do awful, awful Irish accents. I can it's, wait for another time to do awful, awful Irish accents. It's a good good night from David, who will do the fingering if you do the blowing. <laughs> it's a good night from Walter, who was blowing while David did the fingering. <laughs> I always prefer to do the fingering while somebody else does the blowing, but yeah. I like to mix it up sometimes. You know me. No, not yeah. in that way. Yeah, no. And uh, it's a good, <laughs> and it's a good night from Fat Aussie. It is decorating shirt. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a good night from Brilliant. you. Good night from you. Yeah. It's a good night from us. And it's a good night from you. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you all for episode ninety. Uh, everybody, stay safe and sane. Uh, <laughs> very good point go back through the back catalogue oh go back through our back catalogue and oh. uh, have a little uh, a finger and a blow on that lot and uh, that'll keep you going take care <laughs> people <laughs> fuck it up. see you later thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill we will be back again real soon hey.